Yes, people, welcome back to another episode, episode 10. We're already at number 10 of the Mud Brothers Show, your daily, weekly, uh, well, not daily, well, weekly uh, dose of Monday Night Mudness. We are back with the gang gang. You already know how it is. Two things. We are going to discuss two sets of fixtures, two sets of Premier League weeks. We're going to be discussing, obviously, we didn't do a show on Saturday, but we're going to be discussing the midweek fixtures and also the um, weekend's fixtures. So, Without further ado, we will basically get started. I want to welcome the rest of my guests. We got men like Spooby. How are you doing, Spooby? Doing, doing, doing good? Doing good. Doing, doing good. Feeling better? Really? Feeling a bit better. Feeling a bit better, but I'm excited okay. for the show. Excited. Fair enough. Then we got Curry P, Chelsea fan. Obviously, a lot's happened with Chelsea. He's got his Bayern Munich stuff on. Mia San Mia. Mia San Mia. Mia San Mia. San Mia. That's how it's uh, in the description below. Let's fucking go. Here we go. Here we go. Then we basically got uh we got uh, Ed De Niro, the three point collector for this weekend, alongside with his North London rival, man like Eli. The only people who got who collected three points this weekend are the rest of us. But how are you guys doing? How are you how are you how are you guys doing today? Hey, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, you know. Three point collecting. Now we're about to take on Bayern Munich one game at a time. None more. I got nothing else to say other than that. There we go. And De Niro? Yeah, I told you I'd be back in it. <laughs> Free player collector. This is what we do, bro. Get me. Big up. Warrior J, I'm glad you're here. I am glad you are here today because uh, this is definitely an episode for you to tune in. That's all I'm going to say. But we have everybody else in the chat. We got H. Um, we got Warrior J. We got AJ. Big up to AJ every single time. But yeah, without further ado, we're just going to get started straight into it. So we're going to discuss the midweek fixtures first, obviously, because we have uh, there was a couple of games that we missed out. What we, what we will do is we will go through basically um, – we'll go through three teams. Uh, Arsenal obviously got the points against Luton. Eli, I'll let you talk a little bit about it if you want. We'll go through the United and Chelsea game, of course, because I think there's going to be a lot said about that the mud brothers group chat after that game was blowing up there's probably 200 250 messages in that group chat i'm not gonna lie i didn't really read most of them so that we could leave all that topic for discussion right here so no better place to start off chelsea versus manchester united all right um people call this the el classico the el classico or the the mid-off or the mud off right um Finished 4-3 to Chelsea. Cole Palmer scoring a hat-trick. Starboy Cole Palmer is out. He's he's asking. Foden showed up that week as well. You know, Foden scored his hat-trick. Cole Palmer asking where Saka at with his hat-trick, you know. Um, but we'll go to Curry P. We'll start off with Curry P first. Curry P, thoughts on Chelsea versus United? Um, We got the win, but we escaped. It was an escape job. Let's be honest. We should have, first of all, we should have been winning that more. Um, Kaiser gave the ball away. And once we concede a goal, you know, us and pressure when we concede a goal with this team and especially with Poch. Glad we got the win. Love the way we won it. You know, so um, happy about that. Get to get the revenge back on our home, but not happy with the weekend. So. We're going to talk about the weekend, too. We'll kind of delve into – what. actually, what I'll do is we'll delve – we'll go team by team. So, we'll basically discuss both games by team. So, we're obviously starting off with Chelsea. So, 4-3 win. Cole Palmer, like I said, scored a hat-trick. Um, moments of bottle by both teams. Uh, first, you know, obviously, Chelsea take the lead, 2-0. Um, United crawl back in the game with <clears throat> Anthony. Absolute masterclass from this guy. That's probably the first Premier League game where he's actually shown up. Um, his first set of GNA, I think, in the Premier League as well. I could be wrong, um, but he got an assist for one of Garnacho's goals. Or J says Cole Palmer again. Ole, ole, ole. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Chelsea capitulate. We get back into the game, and then United capitulate. Um, two stoppage time goals. I think that's another stat that makes the list of Ten Hag. No team has conceded two goals after 99 minutes and lost the game. Um, just Ten Hag's list grows and grows, but... Spoobs, we'll go to you, a uh, United fan. Your thoughts about the Chelsea game. I know you had a couple of couple of things you wanted to discuss regarding, you know, time added on towards the end, maybe the penalty and stuff like that, but the floor is yours. Talk your shit, man. Uh, yeah, no, at the time, I'm like, I was just hot. The more at it, like, 
the mm-hmm. way we lost it yeah. was these clocks, right? Like time adding on, yeah. Yeah. Continue. Well, you know, you know that's why changed it to the clock to fraud. Uh, yeah. If you leave Palmer in the edge of the box, I don't know who. Like I don't know, everyone is sitting pointing at him. Just left him sitting there. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't think either team's played particularly well. Um, Anthony did have a good game. Uh, I think Palmer had a good game as well. Um, but I'm just more more annoyed at the way we lost it. Silly mistakes, silly defending. Um, I, I think Chelsea deserved the win. I don't think you can make mistakes like we did, give away penalties like we did. I'm not even going to argue the penalties either. Yeah, it's silly mistakes, silly decisions. So I'm not going to sit here and go on about penalties. Uh, better team won, and yeah, just annoyed at the way we lost it, the way we like let it slip. And you know when we went two 0 down and we got two back, it's like the hope it gave you hope, and that's the hope that kills you. Um, yeah. But yeah. Just disappointed the way we lost it. Fair enough, fair enough. Eli, your thoughts on the game? Chelsea obviously taking the win. Um, surprised by anything in that game? Were the referee decisions something that you looked out towards? Because um, there are two penalties given in that game. A lot of people have argued that they were soft penalties, um, either of the which. But your thoughts on the game, bro? Um, I mean, I pretty much got it. <laughs> I expected this sort of game because both of y'all teams are ass. I, I didn't see um, that we are. What I didn't see was the amount of goals that would have been scored. I, I knew it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like a Desmond. That's what I. That's what I predicted. I predicted a Desmond. But hey, I got blessed with three more goals than what I intended. So I'm. I, it was. It was. A, it was an interesting match to watch. Watch both teams fail. <laughs> Especially man, you get to see the capitulation of Chelsea and then the capitulation of Man United all in one game. That's a rare thing. That's a rare thing indeed. Although I will say, in my opinion, Man United was a little bit hard done by by a couple of the penalty decisions. But hey, like I always say, don't put yourself in that position anyway for the ref, you know, to make the ref make a decision. So, you know, it is what it is. Cole Palmer put him away. Nice little hat trick, you know. Uh, you can't be leaving players at the edge of the like the most dangerous player on the opposition team. You leave them free. Obviously, Crazy. something's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's pointing at him, expecting next man to get him, but nobody picks him up, and then boom, what, what happens? He scores. So I think United got exactly what they deserve for, you know, that lapse of concentration in that moment and lack of uh, accountability in that moment, not trying to go out and defend. So in the end, you know, it's like, even though we're talking about two cheeks of the same ass, Chelsea was the better team on the day. So, I mean, that's that's really all I got to say. Cole Palmer, Cole Palmer is him. Let that be known. Cole Palmer is him. Wish somebody else would have got him, but, hey, he ended up at Chelsea. Definitely one of the signs of the season. Definitely up there. For oh, that. yeah. Definitely. 100%. Definitely, yeah. Um, if we look at his GNA, I think he's only – even goals in the league, yeah, we can argue some of them or most of them. I'm not entirely actually sure how many are penalties. So, but so he's currently he's, he's sitting scored. at – Sorry, Sheik. Um, he's scored – he's had seven penalties that he scored for Chelsea in the league. So he has nine open play goals because he has 16 goals in total. So nine open play goals and seven penalties. And then he has eight assists, if I'm correct, so 24 GNA. 24 GNA. So three goals yeah. behind Erling Holland in, in the goal-scoring list. Um, and yeah, Jess had it here too. I think seven non pens, six pens. Fair enough. Cool. Palmer couldn't believe his la- his uh, lack since he didn't even end up looking for a pass before he realized how much space there was to shoot. Yeah, we gave that game to them. You give the guys literally they're one of their best players, and you give him a wide open look. It's like giving Curry a wide open three. Like, why would you do that? You know, in the, in the last moment of the game, you're giving Steph Curry or someone like Kyrie Irving or someone like Luka Doncic a wide open shot. Here, go on, just win the game. There you go. There's your moment. But we we'll move on. Uh, we go to M. De Niro. M. De Niro, your thoughts on the game? Hey, listen. Yeah, man. Get me. Obviously, Cole Palmer and friends. Cole Palmer and friends, they did a good job. Get me. Got their 4 free win. Um, I do think that is shameless from United. I mean, come on, man. Uh, you're in the dying embers of the game. And you can't see out a win or you can't even see out at least a draw. Like That is pathetic. And I think also... With certain centre backs in there, that certain I don't know if United have a top red section, but certain people I see in the United fan base seem to love certain centre backs in your team. 
and he was one of the people that should be taking authority inside the box. So no, no, it's people like that. They need to take authority and realise that five of you cannot be pointing at one player at the edge of the box and nobody goes to him, gives him the space to score that goal, which is absolutely ridiculous once again. And yeah, man, like, it's just like, I st- in, in, in that case here, do you know what's so funny? In that actual case, I still can, in a way, I still blame Ten Hag in it because at the end of the day, you've just instilled some silly mentality in your team. Like this can't be like as a as a as a manager of a club. I blame these type of things. They blame these type of things on managers because at the end of the day, it's a mentality thing. All of these things are simple basics of football. Mark your men in the box. If you see a man on the edge of the box that's got space, go and mark him, bro. Can't just leave man yeah. with that amount of space at the edge of the box. It don't make no sense. And especially in a game where. You weren't even, it's one of those ones where it would be more understandable if you were already losing the game, but you weren't already losing the game. The game was in your hands and then you just threw it away. And it just goes to show how it's really been that all season. And, and I can understand why people would just be Ten Hag out. And if you're Ten Hag in, then I'll be honest with you, you're definitely smoking something that we've never experienced in our life. So, man, I'll be real. I'll be honest with you. It's just it's just one of those. But, um, Certain things, I think this summer, I think if you actually look at the game, I think United are not actually as far off as it seems. As in, when I say far off as it seems, I mean as in, if you had a good manager that can actually work out how to deal with a certain team, with the team that you have, I actually think that you should be way ahead of where you are with the team because there's actually certain individuals in your team in that game that stepped up a bit. In my opinion, maybe not in your opinion, but in my opinion, there were certain individuals that stepped up at the time. But like I said, it's it still comes down to the simple basics. As a manager, you gotta make sure that you're instilling a mentality in your players, like I said once again. So yeah, man, like I just think that's just the basis of United right now. And I would just long may it continue. And I think as for Spooby and his crazy statements, you know, like I think he should guaranteed hold that. And it's one of those ones where, bro, Spooby, that, you know, like we tried to tell you and you were talking about, oh, my team sipping, I was sipping the Kool-Aid. Look at my team now. Where's my team now, bro? Look at my team now, bro. You know what? It's one of those ones where, you know, sometimes you got to think before you speak and you got to remember who you're speaking to, too. You're speaking to Emdenero. I remember everything that gets put across my ears and across my mind, bro. And you're going to sip that shot, bro. <laughs> You're going to take that shot, bro. And yeah, you said, oh, yeah, I can finish the whole bottle. Bro, finish it, bro. Do what you feel. Bro. Do what you feel. Do what you feel. Hey, listen, when I'm speaking, I don't want to, you get me? Don't, not today, bro. Not today, bro. So <laughs> place, you have to hold that. You know where it is? Sheik, i already seen the tears already from you. So, you know, long may it continue <sighs> to you. And yeah, man, like, I just can't wait to continue going on to Sarcasm City, watching the watch alone, watch alone, <laughs> and then coming back onto Sheik's channel to see the, 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 the match reaction and just see man crying all the time. You know, this is the perfect <laughs> thing about football. This is why I love football, bro. This is why I love football. I'm I'm pleasured to be part of this show because this free point collectors thing and these forfeits are beautiful. And yeah, man, long may it continue for United. And yeah, big up Cole Palmer and friends, man. They did the job in it. That's where it is. Yeah, Cole Palmer and friends, Pacha's tactic is in Cole Palmer and inshallah, you know, how, how it's been going. Speaking of which, a couple of players that I want to kind of bring up uh, in this little discussion, right? Can we talk a little bit about a man like Caicedo? You know, he's been supposed to be that signing this this uh, this summer, you know, Chelsea. Oh, we've gotten Caicedo, our man. We've got Paul over Liverpool. We can, you know, we the billion pound Todd Bowley. This don't and that, forget all that type of stuff. the most expensive signing in Premier League history. How could I forget that? Also, thank you for reminding me. Caicedo is also the most expensive signing in Premier League history. And who does he play alongside in that Chelsea midfield as well? Isn't there a certain someone um, who's um, who's won a World Cup? Who's uh, who's um, who had a, you know a couple of years while well, like he whatever league it was the Portuguese league at Benfica who told his Benfica fans that um, in the middle of a tighter race trust my commitment I'm not going to leave you guys you know I'm I'm here for Benfica back me um, and I'm I'll, I will be there for you and he's not really been there for Chelsea can we say that 
I know Curry P. He said, you got, you got I'll you be there before. for you. <laughs> so, I actually, um, I want to show something that Curry P has sent me real quick. First of all, I would like to say, you shameless, shameless. What did Enzo Fernandez do in this Chelsea game besides the... Oh, he got an assist. Fantastic. He got an assist. He got an assist for Paul Mitchell. Have an assist. No, he didn't. He doesn't have an assist. I can show you. I can show you. For the, the fourth goal for Palmer, for the fourth goal on Palmer, it counts as an assist because he took the corner. He got the assist. You can check the Premier okay. League website. He has an assist. Okay, that's like saying um, that's like saying Bruno. So the, Bruno got okay, no, no, you know, know that's also like saying that, that's that's like everyone. City. You know what the funny thing is? You know what the funny thing is with Trent? Everyone's like, oh my god, he took the corner so fast when Liverpool won the Champions League. Yeah, if everyone can give credit for a fast fucking corner, then then Enzo did the same thing, no? And so did, and okay. took a fast free kick, no? And he, we found an open man and got the goal. Okay. No? Fair enough. Fair exactly. Enough. So if we're giving uh... Trent, this, Trent this love, and he got the most pass, he, he outpassed your midfield. I have the other stat, show the other stat about his passing percentage, how many passes he made. We can talk about Caicedo after, but we're going to go after Enzo, right? So let's do that, because he has Enzo at the background, Scooby does, so let's go for that. Yeah, yeah. The other the other clip with the full stats. Because it shows the assist on top of that. It says the assist, so. Okay. No, I'm waiting uh, for you. I'm waiting for you to bring the stat. Uh, an assist for a corner. Cool. That's like I said. That's like no, no, Fernandez. No, no, no. Bring assist. the whole that's thing. Like Bruno Fernandez taking no, no, no. credit for Rashford's worldly against Manchester City. Like, yeah, Bruno Fernandez, great assist. Okay. Yeah, okay. So then, nice so guys, 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 everyone who was chatting shit about Trent when he got the assist for taking a quick corner during the Why Champions League for then come back. No, We're because it's Trent. very. You We're know. You know why? Because it's. We're talking about your yes, because it's a very similar case, and I like how you're excluding. I've given you three different photos about Enzo, and you've not included the other one because I can't count okay, the okay, passing one. I have the up. other stats, no worries. so I've brought it up yeah, three I'll times up. now. No worries. Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. Let's pull up these these stats real quick, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. So first of all, he outpassed both your midfielders, right? Your 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 playmaking, Mano, and your Champions League winning Casemiro, right? So then here's the other right. stat. Let's go for that. The whole stat list. Yeah, the one that shows the one is done on the passing percentage and everything. Is this the one you said in the group? Um, yes, it is. It should be there. It, it has the assist and then passing percentage and then total amount of passes and everything like that. Hey, hey, listen. TJ, just make sure that you win the title at the end of the season. It says it says real foot. It's it says real football at the top of it, and it says breaking news against Manchester United. Sorry, I yeah, need I to adjust this. I need to adjust this. TJ, just make sure you win the title because I'll be real. If you don't win that title, Tell I will again, take Kirk. that flight to America sure, for you. Give me one second. How about that? That's Private what you need. To I'll okay, do that. Do me one second. But while I do look look uh, this up. Y'all, rest rest of the panel, Spoobs, uh, we'll go to you. Your thoughts on um, Caicedo and Enzo? Just on good. I thought Enzo had an all right a game against us. I, I, the only thing that annoyed me about him was him trying to force a fight with Mount just to look good in front of Chelsea fans. Because he obviously heard the boos when he came uh, when he came on. So he's like, oh shit, here's a passion. I'm going to try and force a fight with Mount. And Mount was just sitting there and he was fucking going crazy. Uh, and then Chelsea fans were like, oh, oh, he's amazing, Enzo, I fucking love you, I'm going to fucking blow my load over you. Like, uh, like hey, yo. fucking hell, like, hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true, though. they went crazy for him, just because they wanted, because they were trying to force a fight with Mount, Mount was like, what, what, like, what are you trying to fucking do here? And he was fucking going crazy, I don't want, I don't understand that. Um, but I thought he had an all right game against us, I don't think he played terribly. Which is weird because I think Caicedo had a worse game against us. Yeah, I agree. I can agree. So, well, let me go through that. He has one assist. Uh, he had three key passes. He had 86.6 passing accuracy. And you're like, oh, he's probably passing at the back. He had 82 touches. Sorry, one second. That's connected to my iPhone. He had 82 touches and he had the most forward passing. He had the most pass accuracy going forward. So, I don't get how him as a deep blind playmaker got an assist and did everything else. Okay, so he's a great player. He did right? what he was supposed to do, right? No, so he's a great I'm player, saying right? he did what he was supposed to do. He was he did what he was supposed Let's to go. do. He's a great player, right? right? As a so deep. Enzo's a great player. No, I said he did what he's supposed to. 
because you guys were saying he's basically a, an overrated bum. That's kind of the agenda, right? Okay. Especially with Scooby, he, with Denzel in the background. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the right. weekend. Are we talking about Sheffield? Are those stats about yeah, yeah, him? Yeah. That's what I'm waiting for. No, 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 yeah, what that's is, fine. That's fine. Really, a midfielder um, do against a 20th place relegated Premier League side who's been? They've been relegated. They're done. They're not gonna get. They're not gonna stay in this league. So you basically played a championship side this weekend. What did? Your so-called baller, baller Enzo Fernandez do against 20th place Sheffield. He was you actually so powerful. Well, hold up, you man had all the gas. We beat United. We're we're if we win our game in hand, we're gonna have we're only gonna be two points behind you. We're gonna catch up. This and that. We're not really in the mud. It's United who are in the mud. Holy shit, you guys are so shit. This and that. You guys drew to 20th place Sheffield. 20th mm-hmm. place Sheffield. Talk about that. Yeah. Talk about that game. Sure. What went wrong in that? Okay. One? Was it? Sure. Was it? Um, it, was, it was. I'm sure it was. It was Poch. Poch didn't really set up the team right. Uh, well, Enzo. Enzo. Like he. Poch is really not able to play Enzo correctly. Even though Enzo had this great game against United, but didn't do. He did fuck all against Sheffield. Um, it's it's Don't Poch's forget. fault. This and that. This is the Sheffield He's team that has conceded 82 goals. Two goals. Yeah. Um, I'll wait for you to go for your monologue and then I'll talk. So Newcastle okay. scored eight against Sheffield. Villa scored five against Sheffield. Arsenal scored five, six. How many was it? Six against Sheffield. Something six, like that. I think. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'll so are you done? Can I, can I go? Okay. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking questions. Sure. So are we talking about Sheffield? No, we don't. No, sir. We talk about Sheffield. I thought this was the United section, but if you want to talk about that too, that's fine. That's up to you. Sheik, do you want to talk about Sheffield, or are we playing games well, together? We're just or? talking about Chelsea. This is just a Chelsea segment. So, like you said, I let you hype up Enzo's stats against United. Like, <coughs> like sure. But when you guys want to sure. play in Sheffield, Enzo didn't do anything at all. Pick up to Assam. Sure. Remember what you said against Sheik? I think I do. Um, I actually don't. So, just just remind me again. <laughs> Maybe. I don't remember. But, yeah, just remind me again. Um, sorry to bump in. Sorry to cut in. But I can't lie like there's a lot of talking going on from scrubs and the thing that i don't understand is why you lot are just going at each other when you're both scrubs that doesn't make sense to me i think um you guys should just take a step back for a hot second let me and eli just you get me delve into what needs to be talked about because you lot it's a lot of arguments between guys who have not really done that in this week bro so at the end of the day you get me so Curry. we're gonna let someone we're gonna let someone talk that's done nothing ever. Ah, you, you missed the Garnacho. We better. haven't done something this Mr. season. Garnacho. We haven't done anything ever. Let's, let's 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 do this. You know what, Mister Garnacho, bro. Scooby, 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 Scooby. You know, good. You had a good giving us Chelsea. What? Scooby, Scooby. Do you know the funny thing is, we're both bombs, and we're still made it to the FA Cup further than they did. And the Carabao yeah, Cup. This is the funny part. It's the funny part. It was so funny. It's a good season. You're going to end the FA Cup run with zero trophies. How about that? So at the end of the day, you can get to the final. You get me? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what that is, bro? Do you know what that is? Do you know what a final is? Do you know what a final is? is? That's all it. It don't make No, but you guys are the kings of participation. At the end of this, bro, do you see what you do? You guys participate in the Premier League every year. You see the crooks in the background. You see the crooks in the background. This is what you do. You go back in time. That's what you no, 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 no. The clock's in the background the for the amount of <laughs> years. The, 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 the clocks are for the amount of years you haven't won anything. You see these clocks? <laughs> all these clocks. So many clocks because all these years you bro, still haven't won anything. Listen, broski, it's not my fault that you drew to Sheffield. It's not because my fault. I don't know why hey, you it's not my fault you haven't you won anything since the Carabao Cup in bro, 2008. Listen, you, you drew to Sheffield, you drew to Burnley. I don't know why you want to okay. fight me. Like, bro, this is just the reality of what it is. And that's just okay, like, sometimes I'm, things happen. So... Okay, I get oh. it. So, so you guys losing to uh, our bummy ass. What does that say about you guys? Oh, it's not even. Listen, your bummy ass beat us with nine men, so you can take that if you want. I don't. Okay, it's not my fault you guys you had idiots making stupid want, tackles. You know it's I'm not saying. my fault you had stupid bro, people making listen, stupid tackles. Listen, I'm, I'm giving you your W. If you want to take the nine men, to, you can take that, bro. Have that. Bro, it's a shame. You know why? Because it is a W. I don't care how shameless it is. Bro, we still kick you out. I'll take it to you. I will take it to you, of course. Pause, pause. No, diddy in it. But this is where it is, bro. Like, at the end of the day, you, you do this thing where you like to go back in time and all these things yeah. and just yeah. be chatting, chatting, chatting. But the reality is you drew to Sheffield. And the reality mm-hmm. is you drew to Bernie. And the reality is, is that mm-hmm. your team is Cole Palmer and a stuff for law. Not inshallah, a stuff for law because the rest of the players are dead. So at the end of the day, yeah, this is what we're going to do here. You're going to sit there 
like mm-hmm. you're doing right now. Mm-hmm. And when your shot comes, you're going to take the shot. This is what I'm just going to keep referring back to. And I just want to delve in on something right now, yeah? You see with Enzo Fernandez and the Caicedo thing, I think the person who actually out of the two may need to hold a bit of a grilling for me, I think is Caicedo. And Caicedo, I agree with that. I've looked at Caicedo in these past couple of games. Yeah, man, it's, it's it's not looking good at all. Like, even the um the, one of the Sheffield United goals, I'm pretty sure that he got megged. He got megged with the pass. And then obviously when the pass went for, I didn't, I couldn't see it properly, but I'm pretty sure that it was a meg with the pass. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, bro, like, it's just a bit, I don't know, maybe, I feel like he's lacking confidence. I do think he's still got quality, though. I definitely think I said he's got quality. I don't think people should just be making it like, oh, yeah, he's got no quality. But it's also because he's worth a lot of money. So I, I get, because we people had the same criticism for Pogba. And for, like, for example, when you guys had Ndombele, right? Like, when yeah. he was a lot of money, like, you're going to have that energy. Or even for Darwin Nunes, right? So I, I get that part very much. So, um, and it doesn't help when, like, I know I'm going to blame the man. I'm not fully blaming the manager. He hasn't been playing well. I can agree on that. Same with Enzo, to what they should be, right? Um, like, the only person who I think has lived up to their 100-pound price tag, I wouldn't even say in, is Rice. It's Jude Bellingham right now. Right now. Fair. Right? In world football, I, I could say. So, like, unless Rice wins the league, then you can say it's sure. But that's what I'm saying. So, I get the criticism, but it's like the, the manager and the way he sets up doesn't help, right? Like, if I'm talking about Sheffield, if we're talking about that, you had Gallagher playing a left wing for 70 minutes, okay? Then he he doesn't bring a right back, right? He says that Gusto has, is sick. Fair enough, that's fine. But he plays the slowest center back once again as right back. When we had a, a Chalaba who was playing left center back, who has played right back for Tuchel, Potter, and Lampard. And the other guy he puts in, who he subbed on for Gusto in the United game, and Gilchrist, he didn't even put on for this RC. And on the third part, Caicedo has played right back and done well against Arsenal last season. But he plays the slowest center back as right back. So now your, your link up play that we had with Palmer on the right side, now it would be Madueke is gone. Your left side is gone because you have no winger. You're having Cucurella going into the box. And we know he's not better at ball striking than Chilwell. That's the one thing Chilwell is good at is ball striking. And he's injured. Kukurella is better at defending, I think. So that's the other point. It's like, so then we have nothing. Right? When we have no... When he subbed him up, when he subbed him up, what was your take on it? Am I surprised? No. Yeah. Right? It's Poch. A man scores and he's, he doesn't play them or sub them soon. Doesn't surprise me. He subs off Palmer. And you could say Palmer's not having a good game. Fair enough. But you know what? He still does something. He's the X factor, right? You still keep him on. It's like you keep on. I'm not saying he's De Bruyne, but I'm saying you keep your X factor players on because they're the X factor. Why some them off? If you want to put um Carney on, okay, take off Madueke. That's fine. Put in Raheem Sterling or Mudrik by halftime, and then you can have Carney in the middle, and you can have Palmer back in the right. And he didn't even allow them to play together and have combination play. And we knew, for example, in the Burnley goal, right, two weeks ago, Palmer gave the assist to Carney. So they have linked up. They have the IQ. I think Carney is a good playmaker and can play the number 10 well. He has been getting injured, so I get that part. But then why don't you do those things? Right? Even in the United game, we got lucky with it. He fucking took off Gusto, an attacking threat, when we're 3-2 down. Right? for a defensive right back in Gilchrist. And he brings on defensive players. It's just that we got lucky with the penalty, thanks to Matuweke and, and and the shot by Palmer. But he brought on defensive players. Even for this one, he brought on defensive players as Barry Shield as a left back. Yeah, and he that. brought and he brought on Cassidy. He put he took up Cassidy from a Leicester loan. That was he wasn't great, but he wasn't bad, but he was getting game time because we needed height. And 30 seconds into bringing height, we lose because of height. And that's because just like we learned with Colwell, right? If you're putting a man who plays center back as left back, he doesn't know where to be positionally because in his mind, he's thinking as a center back because that's all he's played all his life and he wants to be in the center. He's not thinking too much about covering the wings and so on and so forth. Blame Arteta, blame Pep. They're the only people in world football that play four center backs. Exactly. 
it's yeah and it's like and the funny thing is this man is the man who's supposed to bring out you right earlier on the season he had a young kid in our subs bench who's from the academy who has played left back and he doesn't even try him on these are the things we could like here's the thing even for the united game in the first half, I cannot blame Poch, right? Because Caicedo gave the ball away and we just needed under pressure. But like you said, De Niro, the pressure part is about the mentality instilled by the coach. Sure. Yeah. Why is it that when we concede one goal and we're up by two goals most of the time that we crumble? Yeah. It's because of the mentality of the coach. And like I said, we got lucky with those two goals at the end against United, but he brought on defensive-minded substitutions when we're 3-2 down. Not offensive, defensive. Yeah, I think it is mentality because even when you played, uh, all like some obviously when you played City, obviously you played well against City. Even when you played, we played to the opponent, we only play well against the. Yeah. We played to the opponent, right? We can tie with City. We can tie with Arsenal. I know. I think we could have tied with you guys if it wasn't nine men, right? I think we could have at least tied or given you a good game, mm -hmm. right? We tied with Liverpool when we were at home. The last time we got beat right now in our recent form has been Liverpool at Anfield. We haven't lost since then. It's just been wins and draws. But obviously, we've been drawing to shit teams, right? Yeah. We've had some good wins too, but we've drawn to also shit teams. And that's got a potch. And then what he does at the press conference is he throws players under the bus again. And if she can bring the clip on, there's a clip of him saying he doesn't care about tactics. All he cares about as a manager is how he makes the players feel and to trust in him. He says, I don't care about formation of 4 3, 4 1, 3 3. I don't care about possession style. I don't care about what, uh, attacking style. There was a whole 30 minute clip that he, and this is an interview who he had a couple of years ago. So what he did he say during the week? He said, I don't think are these mature, uh, players aren't mature enough to play. What did he say? Yeah, something like And then this week, he literally threw them under the bus. Yeah. After the Sheffield game. And I'm like, Okay, so you're throwing this young group that you're supposed to develop under the bus now because you're not getting results because of your stupid tactics. When the player understands that you are working for them, it's not about philosophy to play one four four two or one four three three or play uh, more defensive in a counter attack or dominate the game. It's, it's about their faces. They yeah, feel they feel they feel that saying. you want the best for them. That is the the the, the most uh, like what the heck is this guy talking about? Thing philosophy, methodology, um, style of football, even he doesn't know different what he's ideas. About. I think are not important as he goes. when the player understands that you are. Yeah, can someone just explain what he just said? Because I'm not gonna lie about that. <laughs> he just he said it's about the feeling. It's about how the players can trust him, and it doesn't matter about the formation, the philosophy, or anything like that. This is about making the players feel good. What the fuck are we doing? I just heard a lot of waffle. That's all I heard. My ears are full of waffle yeah, right you. now. Thank you. That's what we're and and now and now he's doing he's doing he's doing no offense. We're both we both have shit managers. He's seeing he's seeing ten hog. He's seeing ten hog quotes like we deserve to draw the game. I'm like, kill me. Kill me. He said that after the Sheffield game. But I heard that I'm like, oh my god, it's ten hog. It's literally ten hog from fucking man. I was like, oh my god, he's drawing inspiration from Ten Hag, he's drawing inspiration from, from Ten Hag's press conferences, not from fucking you know, Klopp, one thing, one thing right, from is Ten one fucking Hag. One thing I love about football is how big of a humbler this sport can be. You Chelsea fans had so much chess. <laughs> Beating us, oh, we've got you guys. You men treated this like a cup final. I never seen you men excited in the past two years with the way that you guys were against us. And these are two goals that we gifted you. We were like, here, here, we're we're pretty shit right now too. Let's let's go ahead and out bottle you guys in this game and go on. The gift and give that you keeps on giving. Matuweke, trust me, Matuweke did not do anything crazy for that challenge. Gallo allowed him to run into the box. And when he realized that he's not catching up, he made that stupid foul. He did what he did. Cole Palmer, not a single person marked him. Our captain is pointing at him saying, yo, look at yep. him. He's just wide open. All right, motherfucker, why don't you go and run there? Why don't you go, try to go and run there and, and cover him up? So this is... I. I love this game. Like, shout out Patrice Everett. But, like how Patrice Everett says it all this time. Yeah. 
I love this game. I love how this game can be a humbling game. Enzo Fernandez, you can bring up all the stats you want. His best highlight is him beefing Mason Mount at our club, from our club. That's his best highlight in a Chelsea shirt. He hasn't done anything of note. I haven't seen anything of Enzo Fernandez in terms of uh, notable and worthy of j calling him this crazy good player. His best, best highlight is him um, trying to wind up Mason Mounts. And don't disrespect Mason Mounts. I hear you guys booing him. Enzo Fernandez was oh. at Benfica doing fuck all while Mason Mount was was lifting you guys can I can I can I talk about that can I talk about that no 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 we're gonna talk about it no no that's true that you do just respect my no 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 excuse me no 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 we're gonna talk about it no 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 yes there is this is this is the Chelsea section no 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 this is the Chelsea section this is the Chelsea section so we're talking about Chelsea you talked about the Chelsea player I'll let you land I'll let you land once I'm done all right one second one second you could bring up most successful passes, most long ball passes by Enzo Fernandez against this shit United team. This is that your is that your, so we are your bar. Is it you you guys are trying to catch up to us after spending all this money. Even with this shit team that we have, even with the shit coach that we have, we're still above you in the league. And you it, it doesn't seem like you men are trying to catch up anytime soon either. We're playing having these games like against like Sheffield United and you drew to Burnley this season too. Bra, crazy man. Hey, but they told okay, me can I, can I go? Fernandez. Can I go? Or... They told me trust in Caicedo. Caicedo picked the right club. They told me all that shit. They said, oh, we we've got that pull. Caicedo goes into that Liverpool team. They probably have a better chance. They probably beat us yesterday. That's what I'll say. If Caicedo goes into that Liverpool team, but it is yeah, one thing is. I will say, I'm telling you, football is a very humbling sport. I hope you learned. Go ahead, then I want I want to speak after. No, 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 no. I'm gonna. I I'll let you, you go. guys learn. That's go ahead, what I'm gonna say. I want to talk oh, about the most. So, so, the, the one thing I'll say, the one thing I'll say is that Chelsea made one of the worst moves decisions they ever could have made hiring Potch. They should have they should have stuck it out with Potter because if they stuck it out with Potter, this team would be in a much better position. Because just think of it this way: if you get if you keep if you keep Pop Potter, they had a better defensive structure. They weren't leaking goals like they are this year. Yep. And their only problem was scoring goals, and they solved that with you know the the uh, you know getting Cole Palmer, getting the likes of you know Jackson with his link up play, you know, and and, and a couple of others. Or even Carney, I think Carney's fine. Yeah, and and unfortunately, uh, you know, they've had injuries, but he had players, you know, that we that we're shitting on, i.e., Enzo, and you know other players playing out their skins last year. The only thing that you know, the only issue is i think in regards to this chelsea team now is a system there's no system and most of the footballers today are system players you know outside of the few you know like cole palmer's jack Grealish's of the world the bernardo Silva's. you know they can play outside of a system they can play in basically any system because they're mavericks you know but chelsea don't have a lot of those so because of that they're struggling and they're playing within themselves so that's that's the one out that I will give Enzo and I'll give Caicedo because we we've seen them play for other teams and actually ball out, you know, look like Even the best players teams. and in their respective positions, you know what I'm saying? So that's the one thing I will say about that. And that's just an indictment on Poch because I just feel like he should be getting a lot better out of these players. But that's not to exonerate them from, you know, because we know their capabilities. They should be playing a lot better. I.e. Kobe Manu at Man United. We see how crap that midfield that. is. You know? not true. So so that. we can't we can't really we okay. can't like at the same time we can't we can't exonerate them because we see players like Kobe Manu thriving in a system that that's that's not benefiting him to the best of his ability. So I feel like they should stop listening to Poch at certain times. You know because we know he has no direction, no synergy. He has no charisma about him. He's just a crybaby, and. And I feel like that that kind of seeps down into the team because they capitulate far too easily. But then you got players like Cole Palmer, for instance, which is like, you know, he he don't conform to that. Like he like I said, he's him. So he's like, no, nah, I'm not I'm not just going to, you know, lay over and take it. You know what I'm saying? Pause. Pause. I'm going to take the game out of scrub for the neck and try to change it. So that that's the one thing I will say in regards to that. I'm not, go ahead, Kirk. So can I respond to the mount thing, if you don't mind? Yeah, respond. Okay, sure. Um, the reason why we have this energy towards mount is we actually were fine with it. Actually, most of our before mount signed, we were actually going to go fully against the ownership. But you know what happened? The video he released, 
it, it was released when he had blonde hair, which was three months before the actual signing happened. So he had made a decision then. Second of all, the video of him and his father saying, we're finally home, does not help the Chelsea fan base when you're saying those things, does it? Right? If you're saying, oh, we're booing our player, yes, because Enzo saw these videos like the rest of us and saw how much of a snake he was being because he's saying he's proper Chels, but pre-recording a video months in advance, months, because he did not have blonde hair at the time when he made the signing, or even a month before he had the signing. It was two months before when he had blonde hair. And yeah. and the whole and, and the whole thing about we're finally home. So that's what it's about mostly, okay? And he called him a coward because that's what we think he is. And you're saying, oh, he's done the greatest thing by getting the Champions League forward. We have booed Frank Lampard when he joined City and he scored a goal against us. We have done that. We have booed Courtois. We have booed other players that have won leagues and Champions Leagues. Mount is not above that when he's only won one Champions League. And we have players who have won multiple Premier Leagues and a Champs and a Europa. You've only and won an two, and he won you one of those. So yes, I don't care. Yes, so I don't. Ca I don't care. I have a Frank Lampard who's won me four Premier Leagues, both three FA Cups, one Europa League, and a Champions League, and we booed him. We booed him when he scored against us. As a player, us. you booed him as a player. Yes, when he scored it from Man when City, man when he was Frank Lampard, Man Man City, was this? Man City, Man City, he scored against us when he. He was loaned to New York, and then Man City was the owner of the New York, um, the New York team, uh, right? So then they loaned him back there, and he scored against us to draw the game, and that's when we booed him. We have booed some of our players. We booed Courtois, who was won us two prems when he was with us, and an FA Cup and a, and a Carabao Cup during that time. We have booed players that have been more successful. I don't care, and the primary reason is. Not even that. It's because he pre-recorded a video two months in advance and him and his father, two days into their transfer when they were in United, said we're finally home. Oh. Yeah, man, I hear that story. I just, so think it's, it's I just think it's really funny how Enzo calls Mount a coward when Enzo because pointed at his badge in the middle of a title race for Benfica and left his own club to join you guys. I just think that's, that's fine. Funny. That's, that's fine. And you know, and you know what he went to? It he was first thing. place for Enzo. He's so who cares? Thing. Yeah. What do you mean? Sorry, or is he done the same thing for? So now Enzo abandoned his club. Yes, but and yes. To be but fair, one, though, he was on peanuts comparatively to what Chelsea was going to pay him. You know, and also, got a and, also to and, and also, there's a no, and there's a difference because Enzo did not go from Benfica to a Sporting. That is very similar to what he Chelsea and United is, right? We're not your biggest yeah. rivals. That would be Liverpool. That's like Benfica and Porto, but it's like a Benfica and Sporting or Benfica and Braga. He didn't do that. Yeah, but if you That's come out and say, oh, I'm going to stay with you guys, I'm going to be here, like have faith in me and all this shit, and then leave. Like, I guess. Like, 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 my thing is, I could, give, I could give two fucks about what Enzo does, to be honest. I really couldn't, right? But I'm just like, it's just funny how you're calling Mason Mount a coward when you did the same thing. Yes, you we know, called him like, a coward because he pre recorded He pre recorded two months in advance. We started going for Enzo hey, that month. And he did, I, and he's done. Fans. I, want him from, I want him out from my club. All I'm saying is respect your Champions League winner, bro. He's, he won a Champions League. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. No, no, because, if, because if we beat win this league, if and when Arsenal win this league, you will give respect. You will acknowledge Kai Havertz. Same way. You know what the funny this Can I, can I, you, do you want to know something? No, no. No, do you want to know something? Sheik, Sheik, do you want to know something? Do you want to know something? Do you want to know something? When we played yeah. against Arsenal, Enzo had no problem with Kai Havertz. He actually posted a friendly photo with Kai Havertz. So it's not an issue of just all of them leaving. It is specifically a Mount issue and how that went about. When we played Arsenal at our stadium, it was a very friendly and amicable thing. Even after the game, they were talking in a friendly way and they have a photo of them posted together with Havertz in an Arsenal, Arsenal jersey and Enzo with the Chelsea jersey. So it's very Mount specific. It's not because of those two. And the first thing, uh, Mount got us, helped us with the Champions League. Well, Havertz did too, and Enzo did not have the energy for Havertz. So it's very Mount specific. You're your London rivals as well. I don't understand why you don't have that energy for him. Because, yeah, like you more, said, Havertz. Yes, but Havertz didn't. Arsenal. But Havertz didn't do those. Havertz didn't do. Yeah, those what's things worse as a Chelsea recorded. fan joining to Arsenal or joining United? They're both the same, to be honest with you. Chelsea would be worse. Come on. Or sorry, Arsenal would be worse. 
a tad bit worse, but then it, it's the pre-context of recording something months in advance. And then it's not like of Kai Havertz. it's worse. You're literally wearing a Bayern Munich scarf right now, and you're telling me it's not worse. <laughs> you're literally wearing a Bayern Munich scarf right now, and you're telling me it's the same. It's worse. No, it no it's worse. not. You get ready no, for this why? no, 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 no. Why are you, you no, wearing this what I love. This, 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 you know, you know, you know, what, I, you know the, what I love the most? I love how someone from a rival fan that's not even in London is telling a Chelsea fan how to feel. That's what I love the most. Tell me how to tell Chelsea fans how to feel. Thank you. No, no, yes, you are. You are telling me how to feel. You are telling me how to feel. And I'm telling you, no, you are telling me how to feel. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay, then you let me let me let me let me break in just a second. So there, there, there are going to be times when players are not going to get along like that that happens in every locker room like not not everybody's going to get along so i feel like in this case havers was probably just friends with everybody at chelsea you know what i'm saying like he never put a foot wrong he probably never you know instigated anything he was amicable to everybody whereas mount was probably big-headed and probably got into a lot of arguments had a lot of bust-ups with people and the fact that that he left the way he did probably you know sold seeds of bad blood between him and the other you know so even that, that, is, that was probably already brewing in the first place like let's say Eli, instance, uh, Mane, Mane and Mane and Salah we all know they were worst enemies they hated each other but you know out on the pitch it didn't matter and the same thing you won't see that on on the pitch like it, it's just it's just something that's not really aired out unless you know people air it out but I'm sure that Mount probably has some bad blood in that in that in that locker room with with the because even players. Chalaba Chalaba even Chalaba and Gilchrist and everyone was trolling Mount. It's very Mount specific, so it, it even shows more of Eli that he didn't get along with the rest of the players, but that he got big headed. And it can be fine if you're big headed when we win the Champions League, or even the year after when he has twenty Genie, not last season. Hmm. You're gonna ask a question. Ask your question. Yeah. Sorry, my question would be yeah. So my question would be, it's how do I equate this? Um, what's what's a midfielder you like right now? Okay, let's do this. Let's see. It's Madison, right? Uh -huh. It's Madison going from Spurs to. Do you have a rival? It would have to be Arsenal, bro. It would be Arsenal. No, it can't be Arsenal. No, it can't be Arsenal because Havertz is Havertz is Chelsea and Arsenal or or Havertz moving to Spurs, so I can't say that. Okay, let's say it's moving to what's like your third be be biggest rivalry for Spurs? Because I think it's probably Arsenal then us and then who would be third? third Fred, who do I hate, bro? Who do I hate? Would it be United? Would it be United or yeah, would it be like it Liverpool? Would it would probably be United still. Yeah, so it's a very similar thing. It would be like Madison. It would be like okay, not Madison. Who's home? Okay, you know what? It's Deli Ali at his peak, right? It's it's two years after he's slowly falling off, right? It's not peak Deli Ali. It's two years after he's slowly, but he moves from Spurs to United, and then you find out that he says he pre-records something two months in advance, and he says he's finally home two days after he gets the transfer. You're gonna have a different energy. Mm, no, fair enough. Way different energy. Now it's true, you know, but you know where it is, bro. Like it's one of those ones where I just want to cut people performance because you are a top deflector. I just want to give you that. Um, I just want to say that obviously this does not take away from the fact that your team due to uh, two two to Sheffield United, and no, yeah, bro. Like obviously at the end of the day, I hear what Sheik is saying. I think yes, obviously certain things have to be discussed. We'll see. I think I think Enzo Fernandez, where it's one of those ones where it's a, it's a, it's just basically a second season in it. So at the end of the day. It's a fair assessment from from rival fans, but you, I, I think you can't take away from the glimpses. That's why I was saying that that you can't take away from certain things that he's done, that like certain aspects of his game that I've. Seen. I think he's going. He's going into his second season. That's all because he joined in January, right? So yeah, he's going into his second season. Too. I just think, but I, I'm just saying that I don't think you can. Like I know certain players that I call. If I'm not that they're the same player, but I could say the same with like a. Like a person like Sancho, for example, in it like Sancho, we've seen what Sancho can do. We know that Sancho has potential. Sancho, sorry, has potential to potential to be a, a great player if he's obviously um what's it called, led in the right direction. Probably a better manager around them, better better um what's it called, a better surrounding around them. But at the end of the day, like I said, you'll still get 
with with what I'm saying to you, Curry P, is that these players are gonna get questioned whether you like it or not. People, no, are that's gonna, fine. I agree with that. People are gonna that's get fine. onto them twenty fours, and I think it's just similar aspects. But I think if if he does next season, if he don't perform next season, then yeah, man. That, but yeah. but but De Niro, I even said that in the Burnley game. I said it doesn't matter who the next manager is next season; they will have no excuses if they do not perform. I said that last stream, so it's not like I'm hiding. I'm saying it's very pot specific. I'm saying it doesn't matter who we have next season, even if it's Poch again. If they're not stepping up, maybe it's Poch. They might not step up to the way heights, but they should play still better because I want them to mature. So they should still play better than this season. Yeah, so I don't care who the manager is. It can be fucking my dad who's the manager. They still need to do better. Yeah. Next well, season. Hopefully your club changes from Cole Palmer and friends. You get me. Hopefully you go back to Chelsea next season for your own sake. I so, also yeah. don't know how we're still. Apparently we're still very much linked and gonna get Oshiman, which is very surprising to me. Yeah, get him. Very surprising. That would be like, a good. Take him off our hands, please. I, I don't. don't that, I don't. But it's also like we're also like sorry, just for like two seconds. That's like, but then we're also spent like four scouts to supporting this one this month alone. So it's either for Gilchrist, Amarin, or Diamande. It's one of these three. Like we're getting one of these three this summer. So I don't know who though. But yeah. Yeah, keep hoping, my boy. You got me. Keep hoping, man. Hope you guys make it. Just get Gallagher. Just get Gallagher out of my club. Hey, hey, De Niro. Do something for me. Do something for me. Hey, I heard I heard that prayer is a powerful thing, man. So keep on praying. Keep on praying. Yeah, I'm praying. I'm praying for I'm praying for two things. I'm praying for Gallagher to go to Spurs. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it, man. I need Man City to win the league. I need Man City to win this league. Yeah, definitely that though. I agree with that though. Hundred percent. I can't. Any I can't have the Klopp love Chelsea? fest. I can't have a. Any I can't have a Klopp love fest. Oops. You got something to say? Uh, no. Nah. I think it's it definitely you every single time. We could bring. Uh, we didn't go for Rianzo stats against Sheffield, did we? Oh yeah. Do you want to yeah. go for, go for the stats? stats? Yeah. So Klopp apparently, or... um, I hey Sheik, if you look at what Prime just uh put, he's essentially agreeing with CP. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. Stand for player reviews, particularly when it's not warranted. But in relation to Mal, I'm not gonna lie, it's valid. I'll elaborate more on the stream, maybe a two and error call. And I hear you, yeah. Mal, Mal did whatever he did. All all I simply said was it Enzo's greatest highlight so far for Chelsea this season is that video clip against Mount. That's it, man. I know you guys are triggered over Mount. I knew this thing will, would rattle you guys up. So that's all that's all I said. That's all I said. You're all of Enzo's so, best highlights of last year. So called best midfielder. Uh, even yeah. last year, his highlights were nothing great. There was nothing great that I could really remember. I, I trust me, I would have probably remembered nothing great, really. So, his last highlight last year was they they finished what well, tenth? Did they finish tenth again last year too? Something like that. But it is it is what it is. But we move on. We move on. Um, we'll go to let's see who should we go to. So, we'll go to United because obviously we basically drew against Liverpool yesterday. We uh, you know. All hope was lost at one point where we all were discussing how United are going to capitulate. This could be one of those games where Liverpool have probably learned um, from the FA Cup picture. They will probably come over to finish their chances, all that shit, but they didn't. Um, yet again, United started off the game terrible. Um, they We went down a goal through Luis, through, uh, Luis Diaz, obviously a corner from from Liverpool, nodded off by Nunes. Luis Diaz was there. United played the same dead football since then. And then something changed. Something something changed. And United went 2-1 up. Um, Bruno Fernandes scored crazy goal. Um, didn't really think he had that in his locker, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. But Kwanzaa makes a very brutal mistake. Kind of kind of like how, you know, Steven Gerrard, when he slipped and he threw away the league. Kind of felt like that. I'm not going to lie. Like the league was just slipping away from them. It's falling away. But... It is what it is. Kwanzaa makes a mistake. Bruno Fernandes equalized. And then my baller, Kalbi Maynou. You Chelsea fans wanted to tell me Kalbi Maynou didn't do shit against Chelsea, but it don't matter. He doesn't need to do anything against you bums because you bums are not going to catch up anyways. It's enough for me to say he was going to perform in a game like this. What a way to get your first ever United goal in the Premier League at Old Trafford against the Ops. I can't ask for more. We bought over that game in the end. It's it's all on us. We've given away three penalties in the last two games. 
crazy. Absolutely crazy. First Premier League goal at home, Kobe it was him, man. I've been saying this. This guy is him. This is what Enzo should be learning from. Kobe Mano doesn't care who he plays alongside. Kobe Mano doesn't care who his manager is. Kobe Mano plays the way Kobe Mano plays because it's that talent. That's all I'm going to say. Sheik, 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 Sheik. If you want to do Sheik, if you Sheik, if you want to do prop, that's not his first goal in the Prem. If you want to get your, if you want to give him the love said, test, at least get it. Fucking, no, he said that he said at Man United at, 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 at Old Trafford. Trafford. Yeah. So if okay. I if I want to do prop, just hear it clearly. I said at Old Trafford. Okay. It's okay. Don't be rattled. Okay. Has Enzo Fernandez okay. has he scored in the Premier League this season for Chelsea at home? Has he scored at home? Yes, he literally <laughs> has. He has seven okay, goals in the league, but I'm okay. He, he has seven I'm goals asking. in the league. He has seven goals in the league, but okay. Enzo Fernandez has seven goals in the league? Yes, yes. Okay, fair enough, cool. And you guys are still 10th place? Hmm. Okay, cool. Those goals helped a lot. Well no, more on the manager, well but continue. Those goals helped a lot. Well done, well done. But anyways, we move. Kavimedu, just talk, hey, talk to me nice. That's all I'm saying. Talk to me nice, man. Okay, you wish your sure. Enzo Fernandez was playing with our Kavimedu right now. You wish. Mm -hmm. That's what I call a no. talented baller. Not that Argentinian okay. fraud. We did fuck it's all. Okay. We did fuck all for um fuck all for Benfica and just got a move to Chelsea. And yeah, he won the World Cup even though that was all Messi. Great. Well done, Enzo Fernandez. Well done. Anyway. Actually, they they lost with Messi before he came in, but to Saudi Arabia. But you know, we're not gonna say anything. Yeah, about Saudi it. Arabia. The one game that they lost the whole tournament. Nobody gives a fuck about that shit. It's whatever. Messi. I see everyone was giving a fuck what because is, everyone man. was freaking out. But it's okay. It's okay. Uh, who's uh, who's freaking out over Enzo Fernandez? Nobody was. Only you, Chelsea fans, freaking out over him. He was. He was. If you were. Enzo Fernandez. Actually, yes, it was because he was literally voted the best young player in the entire tournament. Mm. Young player yeah, in, yeah. In, in the entire tournament. There's no that is that is the award. Who's better? So Musiala was in the Musiala plays for Germany. Play He's for Germany. nineteen. Exactly. Yes. Play for Germany, a shit German team. I'm okay. Play I'm sorry. Time. What? Okay. What are you gonna do? Okay. Julian Alvarez was in the team. He was in the starting lineup for for Argentina. What are you talking about now? He started the World Cup. What are you gonna talk about now? The same Argentinian okay, so team. So no, no, tell me about that. No, 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 tell me about that. First you were saying, oh, it's Germany, you should. But now I'll give you the same damn team with the same starting lineup and Enzo Fernandez still won the best young player. So hold that. Kobe Manu with what, three months? Three months, not even three months, huh? And he gets his second freaking goal in United. Good job, dude. Good freaking job, man. Clap to that. Clap to Let's clap to that. Guys, have you ever seen a one season wonder? I have. Deli Ali was a thing. Deli Ali was a thing, wasn't it? You're familiar with that. Sound what you're saying? Oh, wait, 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 wait. CP, CP, CP. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. One second. Are we forgetting about James Rodriguez who did the same thing and did fuck off for Real Madrid? That's my whole point. Actually, James, James Rodriguez was not. Thomas Rodriguez what was not has, voted young player of the tournament, but okay. Done for Chelsea, bar getting you guys in the top half of the table. Has he made y'all top five in the two two years that he's been here? But no, it's on Poch. It's on our managers. We need to get the right coach for Enzo. That's just what it okay. is. Okay. Okay. Sure. Cool. And then whenever no, so wherever you no, it's okay. Wherever you guys fall next season, no, 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 no. Keep the same energy. Player. No, no. Keep no, no. Keep the same energy because if you yeah. guys are not top four with the best midfielder in this league in Kobe Menu next season, Did I, I do not we want to hear. Top four? Did I no, I don't care. I don't care. Four? I don't care. He should be good don't enough. I don't, I don't care. He should be good enough four. because I he should be good enough. Because if you guys are six, no, 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 buddy. If you are six, no, no. If you are six this season, if you are six this season with the with the Enzo Fernando who has just shown up, then don't you dare not come top four next season. If you are six this season, sixth. Sixth, only two places, only two places to go up. If you are sixth this season, you better be getting top four next season with this best midfielder. And I don't care if it's Ten Hag, I don't care if it's freaking some dead guy as your manager. I do not care. I don't care if it's Southgate. I do not care if it's the gerbil who is your manager next season. You must get top four. And if you do and not, you must I will have the top half of the table. You must finish in the top half of the table. That's all okay. I'm going to say. Don't worry about that. And Don't worry about that. You must finish in the top, okay. top half of the table. Okay. And if we do, then what? Because Nothing. Nothing happens because we're shit. has not been musting in the past two years. That's all I'm going to say. It has not been. It's not been happening lately, bro. You need to worry about. You need to worry about getting six because you finish around 10th every single year for the past two years. You need to worry about finishing six, my friend. Not us. Okay. So okay, that's fine. Is what it that's is. fine. You guys that's could fine. be a Liverpool team with kids with a bunch of Tom Littles in a Carabao Cup final. You guys couldn't. Yeah, and you guys couldn't. Oh, and you guys couldn't beat a, no, no, hold on, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Talk about this. Oh, no, we will. You know what? 
Hey, De Niro, De Niro, you know what else we should, we should talk about? Because we lost the kids, right? But hey, they had some starting players, right? But we lost the kids. Do you know who lost to a Danish, a, Den- a, a team from Denmark? Do you know who lost to a team from Denmark? Copenhagen this season in the Champions League. Copenhagen, Copenhagen in Denmark. In Denmark. Do you I know hate- where they are? In, do you know where they are in the, mo- the leagues? I think they're like 20. I don't know where we're going Europe. back. We literally they're just had to go to Chelsea's last game to they're get into stats. Do you know where it is? Come on, man. That's the ironic part. That's the ironic part. Possession yeah. lost against yeah. like Sheffield United. Enzo, Enzo Fernandez, he lost the ball 24 times. He had five ground duels. He won none of them. Um, he didn't make a single tackle in the Sheffield game. Not one. How about you, yes. sure? Uh, you sure? You uh, sure? No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm reading okay. off the stats. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. I right, make you sure passion your your you know your proper hey, chills you punch in you passion. Be a Burnley and the Sheffield United hey. relegation side teams. Will shouldn't be chatting because oh, we'll be we will oh, hide all the time, bro. Will was always hiding, bro. He should never be chatting. That's also true. That's will also true. This man never shows up. I, I just wanted to say something, CP. I know obviously you're getting onto United for that, but if we're gonna obviously go back, obviously last time I recall is like you know. Like not to be rude or anything, but obviously mm-hmm. Chelsea played Middlesbrough, and if there wasn't a second leg, I don't think um, obviously Chelsea would have gone through. Um, That's fair. In, in that cup tie, but obviously I don't mean to be rude or nothing. And I just thought let me just bring up just you get it. just to be fair. You know you gotta be a fair when you collect three points. You gotta be fair to all the scrubs in the in the channel right now. So <laughs> obviously yeah, but I just thought yeah. Yeah, no, I know, I, no, no, can I, can I continue if you don't mind for a second? No, it's all, it's all good. Dude. It's all good. Um, well, they did lose to Galatasaray and draw with Galatasaray that season, and they just beat Copenhagen and then lost to Copenhagen. So if we're gonna do the, you know, we lost to Middlesbrough if there wasn't a second leg, like, kind of similar to them because they lost to Galatasaray the their second game. Yeah, their second game. And then drew with them after that. And then they barely won one nil against Copenhagen and then lost to them. So if we're gonna do the Middlesbrough thing, I can bring the Galatasaray and Copenhagen two legs. No offense. Okay, man. All like I said, you don't have to bring all that. Just bring yourself to the top after the table. That's all I'm asking. Actually, we are. We actually are right now. We're yeah, ninth. Yeah, you Let are me check. Let me check. Yeah. Huh? We're ninth. I'm oh, checking hey, the cookies hey, right now. Let's go. You don't have to hit show more anymore, bro. When you're yeah, man. Table, you have to hit show more. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right now, Sheik, I'm going to send you a screenshot right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact, you could probably even bring it up yourself, maybe, but it might look bigger on your screen. But if I send the screenshot, you get me. It's a bit more. So let me just. Uh, oh, yeah, we're not. Okay. Sorry. This is, uh, by the way, I've not altered nothing. I've literally, I'm sending the screenshot directly how it came up. So, so this is all I'm saying. So, in your DMs, you get me. Like, <laughs> you get me. So, like, you get it. Like, I said, I did not change nothing. I didn't, you get it. I'm just saying, in it, like, bro, this this is how my, that's how it came up. I can't, I honestly can't see because, like, there's the man you're in Okay. Sorry. That's how it. I promise you, there's no. No, it is because we're ninth. I told you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it yeah, shows yeah. the eighth. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Big up, man. Big up, big up. Yep. Dude, the scroll down. Yeah, big up. Oh shit. My yeah, bad. but we are we are ninth. <laughs> yeah, I, I, told, I said that, so we're right about that. Congratulations, congratulations. You guys are ninth. Yeah, hey, no problem. No problem. No problem. Anyways, no problem. we move. We move on. Any any final words about um? Or I'm gonna hear your. Oh, sorry, I forgot we were on the United section. Wanted yeah. to hear your guys' thoughts about the United game. We'll go to Spoobs. Spoobs, your thoughts about the game? Obviously, we did a match reaction yesterday, but you can kind of give your summarized thoughts, basically. Uh, yeah, I don't think we played as well as we did in the FA Cup game. I've seen like some United fans saying we played well in the first 15 minutes. I don't think we did. Um, yeah, again, I think we played FA... worse than how we did in the FA Cup game. Clear, because we actually oh, for won sure. the FA Cup game. So if we yeah, drew, I, don't know how... I think we yeah. really played, yeah. Oh, yeah, go on, I don't sorry. know how we can play better and not have a shot in the first half. How the fuck does that happen? Like there has to be there. Ha- like if your alarm bells aren't ringing, if you haven't had a sh- one shot, I'm not talking about on target. I'm talking just a shot. Like your alarm bells need to be ringing because there's something seriously wrong, and that's why that everyone gets on at ten hard because uh, how does that happen? Um, I want to big up Big Willie. He was fucking rock solid at the back. 
Hey, no pause, no pause. Big uh, you know, eight. Big, <laughs> big, big what? Big Willie. You don't know who Big Willie is. Who is this? Big Willie was a rock solid at the back. Yo, Let me yo, check this yo. team. Wait, wait, who's on your team? What do you actually oh, I'm he, so he filled in the hole, bro. He filled in the hole, came on the game. Wait, uh, you oh, know. Wait. <laughs> oh, oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, he played well. He, um, you know, to get I'm not in this conversation. No, 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 no. No, Diddy. No, Diddy. No, 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 Stop why you are here, Diddy. Diddy. bro. You, you, I don't support Diddy. Somebody Diddy. gave you the shovel. You just Diddy. digging deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, bro. Yeah, shout out, Big Willie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rock solid. Uh... He got through in that line. Uh, who was Rock Solid? Who was Rock Solid? Big Willie. Wild boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big Willie. <laughs> I'm not pausing that bit. You think I'm going to find Glenn? Yeah. Big Willie, Rock he Solid. Says, he says that and it says Rock Solid after. What? Stuck in the car. Calm down, bro. Calm down, broski. Stuck in the car. Yeah, he played well. Hey, shout out to Flawless. Relax. Relax. Um, but yeah, no, he was good. Um, to get to go against Liverpool, uh, have Maguire beside you. I'm sure he wasn't always confident about that. Yeah, he had a good game. There was a couple times where he misjudged like the long balls and shit like that, but he made up for it. Um, and yeah, um, Rashford terrible game. Uh, Hoyland non-existent. Uh, I'm I'm getting tired of the excuses for Hoyland. You cannot look. You can keep blaming the players around you. You can keep blaming them, blaming them, but you have to make yourself get yourself into the game. Like you can't just be, you can't just hold up play all the time. You have to make runs. Yeah, like he wasn't causing any problems for their defense, none. So Hoyland non-existent. Uh, Granacho mediocre. Um, my new, I actually apart from the goal, I don't think he had that good of a game. Uh, yeah. Uh, um. Uh, yeah. Apart from the minor goal. Wasn't a great game. Casemiro played all right, um, but yeah, um, I don't. We didn't deserve the draw. Liverpool should have finished us, uh, finished us off. Nope, yeah, no pause. Uh, and then um, yeah, we got a point. We put a dent in Liverpool's Liverpool's run for the title. That's all I'm happy about. Call me petty. I don't care. And then Klopp can you know the German Ranieri can go cry, retire, go I know play golf or something. Uh, and yeah, uh, Liverpool can. I would be scared of us, Liverpool fan. You guys have a rough time coming up. You know, you you can't hide behind Daddy Klopp anymore. He's not going to be there. You know, yeah, you're going to have to go through a transition period. You're going to have to. Salah's going. He's getting old. You've got Van Dijk. He's getting old. You, you have to start. Trent to start. Trent might be going to Madrid. Trent might be going to Madrid. Scary times. You've seen it. We're going through it. You're going through it right now. Yet Arsenal are going through it. You know, for a while. Chelsea are going through it right now. Liverpool fans, I'd be scared. But um, yeah, we didn't deserve shit. We're terrible. Our season's over. That's the only joy I take out of that game is putting a dent in Liverpool's uh, title run. And yeah, that's it. For real, man. Liverpool fans too. Like I said, hold that, you absolute bums. This is supposed to be Klopp's last year. All emotional. You know, we're going to win the league. We're going to win all four trophies, the quadruple. Same thing is happening the last time you guys opened your mouth about some sort of quadruple. You guys bottled it. Absolutely bottled it, right? It is what it is. Hold that, man. Hold that for Liverpool. Uh, shout out to Hassam. Hassam's the only one who's been real about all this shit. He actually mm -hmm. predicted a 2-2 draw on his stream. He said he wasn't confident at all because I've said this before too. It doesn't matter. Form goes out the window in games like this. When you play a United and a Liverpool, form goes out the window. We went to Anfield last year on a good, decent run of form, and we got packed seven nil. All that shit goes up, goes out of the window when you play games like this. Same thing happened for Liverpool. A lot of people can argue, yeah, yeah, this game should have been should have been done in the first half. They should have definitely packed us away in the first half. Should have been up two nil. 3-0. Shabazzai could have had a couple of goals. Salah should have scored a goal in the first half, too. That game should have been done. But this is what happened. Like, bottle tendencies. Like I said, form, nothing nothing matters in games like this, man. We, we showed up. We had that effort, that energy. We were there. We were more determined to get them goals, and we did. And even for us, look at the goals that we scored. It was a mistake off of Kwanzaa, 
And it was a moment of brilliance from Kaben Menu. Bar that, we didn't really do much in the game in terms of creating. So that's just what it is. Just, can I answer Prime's brilliant. question about Rasmus? Yes, I was just going to pull that flop up. Or not? Prime asked, yeah. he said, I don't know who's uh, who the guy's name is in the middle. Spoobies, by the way. Um, he says, what's your thoughts on Rasmus? Is he a flop or has he gotten, has he not gotten enough service? Look, I had to be careful what I say because United fans, when I go after Rasmus, I get DMs from United fans being like, oh, don't talk flop. about him like that. He's a flop. He is. Come on. Like, they're, the memes at the start waiting for a miracle to come, all that shit. That's because he couldn't, <laughs> fucking, score. <laughs> he couldn't fucking score. And when he is in games now, he, go, he ghosts. He ghosts. I'm tired of making excuses for him. He was 70 million. He's not been good enough. Um, and yeah, we were uh, for a wee bit. We, people were blaming it on the the service. You know, well, he's not getting the crosses. He's not. You have to do something. Yeah, you like you're playing for United. Fucking, you have to, you're in the prem. Like you, you have to be. Sometimes you have to put yourself in the game. Sometimes you have to make those chances. So I would say it's a flop. But United fans are Christmas uh, crucifying for saying that. Yeah, um, flop. You know what? I would agree. Like. Flop in terms of the amount of money that we spent. Has, he, has he shown signs of him being a decent player? Sure. I mean, he had that little bit of run in between where he was scoring goals. Um, there's been stats of him not being assisted for a lot of his goals. But for me, there's a lot that Hoyland has to learn. And I think having an experienced striker, a second striker, if we would have bought one in, in, in the summer, even in January, would have helped him out quite a lot. Would have taken a little bit of that weight off of his shoulders and that pressure on it, but it is what it is, man. When you play, when you put the shirt on, there's expectations from day one because it it's a lot to play for a club like this. And I speak that for all your guys' clubs as well. It's not easy playing for these big clubs where the where the pressure and the limelight is always on you. So Rasmus, for 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 the most of it, I I can see that he's showing signs of him improving. Earlier on the season, this guy couldn't even hold up the ball. Like it was it was terrible from him. There's no link up play, none of that. Now he's actually looking like he he can do some of those basics right, but you go step by step. And do I think a better manager could get more out of Hoyland? 100%. 100%. By playing the right players around him, the right system around him, all of that type of stuff. But it is it is what it is. So CP, we'll go to you. Your thoughts on the United-Liverpool game? Okay. Um, first, I need to get some clop things out of the way. Um, go on, floor yours. So, if Hassan or any Liverpool fans are watching this, you guys are shit. Your best ever period in this Premier League is our shittiest period in our Premier League. You have won the same amount of Prems, Champs, and FA Cups. Hell, we have a Europa League on top of that, you frauds. If you do not win the Europa, there's going to be so much smoke. I don't care where we end up. You guys are in your best period, and you are this dog shit, you frauds. How do you let go of another? Oh, Van Dijk can play with anyone. Oh, he's going to make everyone better. Oh my god. Yeah, you frauds. You're bang average. Your team is bang average. So boss is overrated as shit at 80 million pounds. You want to talk about my guy? Your guy's supposed to be an offensive eight. My guy's a a playmaking, like a deep flying playmaker, and he has the same amount of GNA as your fraud. What is this? The so loving fest. Oh, and I cannot wait till Klopp goes because we know what you were. We know what you were. Oh, but you guys got Michael Edwards. Do you think you're going to get the same money investment? You guys only bought Darwin Nunes because you were once again going far in the Champions League. And if you guys, do you think you guys are going to, it's going to take another rebuild because Salah's getting older. Sure, he can play for another two years, maybe one year tops at the highest level where he's carrying your team. But if Kouri Gakpo doesn't step up, then you're shit. Okay, Nunes has been bang average. Luis has been as good as Raheem Sterling statistically, and we think he's shit. So what are you guys going to do? And then if you're telling me you're going to get an Amarin, oh, is this fan base going to like a three at the back? I don't care how offensive it is, because you were bantering us in our eras when we used to play three at the back. So now, so you guys better not change your tunes when, when if you guys get Amarin and play three at the back. Don't you dare. How do you once again miss an opportunity to win this league when it was all all in your hands. This is the shittiest United team, right? They should have been on lower morale because they lost to us the way they did at the last minute. And you do this against them again, just like in December when we all thought they were going to get battered and you do not take the opportunity. 
you guys have been and are quote unquote bottle jobs. When you are the favorites for something, you, for the most part, you do not do what you're supposed to do or when there's actual pressure on you. Because I'm sorry, besides the FA Cup and Carabao Cups, you guys have done nothing at the Champions League when you guys were favorites of both, both the times you faced Madrid. And you beat us, and I'm not trying to take shots at you, Daniel, but you beat a Spurs side with an injured Harry Kane. And you've bottled the league three times now because this is going to be the third time when you're going to go close to points with Man City or Arsenal, and you've bottled it again. So you guys are the bottle jobs. You guys are the actual bottle jobs. Because in all our successful periods, I'm not taking shots at you again, Daniel, we have capitalized with multiple leagues. <laughs> we have capitalized with multiple leagues. That's a mention. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, dude. We have capitalized with... <laughs> I, I was not trying to be that. I'm sorry, man. Um, we capitalized with multiple leagues. Yeah, I hear you. Like I said, man, Liverpool fans, there's a certain 16 out of 10 merchant who likes to go around how you know, week saying Liverpool are going to win the league. How do you let Enzo, gonna how happen, do you let Bruno happen. Fernandes score that goal? He comes out with tweets and, like, you know, going into people's chat saying, Run the blood to la club. You've won the league. Like, you, congratulations to Arsenal. You've won the league. Oh Liverpool, are not, Liverpool are not oh winning. God. This and that. Blah, 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 blah. The flip-flop is crazy. The flip-flop is actually crazy. For real. It looks like my flip-flop that I have. In, in and, like my and, garage and, right now. You and, know, and she came up top. Crazy. Yeah, dude, I know what you're talking about. And she, can I add on yeah. to Later one last clip. Can I add to one last clip? Clip? These oh, guys okay. always tell the rest of us English clubs about how they're the biggest club because they won six European trophies. You guys had a parade for an FA Cup and a Carabao Cup. You guys had a parade for that. You had a parade for a Carabao Cup and you're supposed to be the biggest club in this, in this country. You do not represent us properly. You think of Chelsea, if we don't win, win something else, besides, if we just won the FA Cup and Carabao Cup during our heyday, would be holding a freaking parade for that bullshit. Or an Arsenal. Or a United. No. Your fan base are also bottle jobs. Your fan base is fine with mediocrity. I watch you guys change your tune with Michael Edwards, because most of your fan base is Michael Edwards in because Klopp has been carrying this club. And that's why he's exhausted, and that's why he's not fulfilling his contract. Because you do not back him properly with players. It is what it is, man. But we'll go to Enzo Your thoughts on the game, bro? I'm looking for this clip still. My bad, y'all. <laughs> uh, CP, how dare you? <laughs> I, did not say, I, did not, I did not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not. I'm sorry. 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 I'm and I'm prime. They'll be doing backup dance on the comments. I see you, bro. Listen, they'll be doing that, bro. I'm watching you, man. Nah, man. To the game. Um, I can't lie. I personally think there was actually a period of time. I think after the 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 the, the Bruno goal went in, obviously as the game went on, United, you get me. They were growing in confidence in the game a bit. There was a period of the game where I think you were actually playing all right. I wouldn't say it was excellent, but it was it was all right, better than usual. And then, yeah, man, just, you get me certain individuals, individual brilliance that weren't got a natural speed. Be obviously, uh, Kobe Mano, obviously, you get me. That, 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 that was a good finish, I can't lie. It was instinctive, very good finish from him. But, um, yeah, man, like, Liverpool, you had one flipping job, bro. Like, I don't understand, bro. You had one job. And now you got me here sitting, sitting here now, I'm all stressed. Because now... A certain team from down the road might actually oh, win this title after all the chat that I was giving. Look what you're doing to me, bro. This is the thing. You see, with Liverpool, it's always a hit and miss. Even this season, like, even though they ain't really, like, they ain't even lost too many games like that. You're just rubbing us out. Like, at the end of the day, you're one nil up. Luis Diaz, good goal, whatever. Now, I've heard the... Funny enough, I actually heard the shout from Van Dijk when Kwanzaa played the pass. But, bro, come on, man, like... You're a centre back. You're playing and you're playing professional football. You're now in the line. Like, come on, bro. Like, the first thing you do is you check where you're passing to, bro. Don't just play aimless passes without looking up. And the thing is, with that pass that really, 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 really rattled me was the fact that he had he could have just even gone back to the goalkeeper. 
And life would have been cushy, but no, 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 no. You decided to be an absolute donut and decide to just pass the ball without even looking at where you're passing the ball. And then man gives away the ball. And now this is the thing that gets me rattled because now we've got guys like my man in the comments who start getting excited. And the thing is, he has a right to be excited because now, because of Liverpool being bottle jobs, this is what is now going on. We've got these men for this. Oh, but look, at the end of the day, United, United, obviously, they, they, they messed up as well once again because obviously it was in your hands. Obviously, the one Bissaka tackle, obviously, I hear it like you're, you're very good at your 1v1s. You normally win them tackles, but that one was so pointless because I'll be real. Harvey Elliott was not going anywhere with that ball. You stand them up, you get a block in, that ball goes somewhere else. But at the end of the day, I think it's just one of those ones where uh, Liverpool, like Darwin Nunes, like, you know, I actually back Darwin Nunes a lot, but bro, uh, man, come on, man. Like, that square, all you got to do is square that to Sabozo, like, and even Sabozo too missed a couple chances as well. But, like, it's just Liverpool, who some actually said this as well, yeah? He said that the reason why we will bottle this league is because we don't finish our dinner. And I remember the the, the, um, the show that he said that, and he literally said it. He was like, that's what's going to cause us to lose this league. And that is literally what has happened in this game. And I personally think after this game, it's actually a, a City and um, Arsenal thing. Now, now I don't yeah. think Liverpool are involved in this. You get me? I think it's a City and Arsenal thing because I think if Liverpool win that game, that's a statement. And I actually do think Liverpool probably would have gone on to win the league if they had won that game. But you drawing, I just know in that camp, it's all going to go down wrong. You get me? It's not going I feel like obviously you miss Jota because Jota's a finisher. Even Salah, bro, like Salah was even missing certain chances that he would normally score. But even Salah, Salah's got a little bit of a um a little bit of a gene where you get me can miss some chances that he should be scoring. But bro, like at the end of the day, in that game, I think Liverpool panicked. You get me? You were playing well. You had everything in control until that Quanza, until that Bruno Fernandes goal. And I think it's one of those ones where that shouldn't, as a team that's challenging for the title and as a team that's been in a title race before, that shouldn't rattle you. Like, that one goal should not rattle you. There should still be calm. Do you get what I'm saying? There should still be calm yeah. in, in, um, in your in your team. You've got enough heads in your club. You've got enough players on that pitch that have won a title before that should know how to act when it comes. <clears> they just <throat> turn into a panic, bro. I just feel like yeah. people put turn into a panic. And, yeah, man, you lot are, you lot are joke, man. I don't respect you. You put you you've almost you've basically hopefully not but it's looking like you might have put me in the mud and it's one of those ones where yeah man I literally hate you look like you you lot of scrubs drawing to United could have won the game and now this guy on, on 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 the on the left or whatever right of me see I don't even know my left to right no more like bro he's all smiling in the corner of the show and that and I hope that that smile gets wiped off your face bro at the end of the season. But yeah, man, Liverpool, you lot of scrubs. You know what, Bunnett, hold that. I don't even give a toss. Hold that. And I hope you don't win nothing. I hope you don't win nothing else in the, in this season, bro. I hope you rub out. I hope you don't win nothing else this season, bro. Yeah, man. Big up. Fair enough. Yeah, I was going to say pretty much the same thing, too. I think Liverpool, if Arsenal or City played us at home in the situation that Liverpool were in, where they're creating all these chances, not a single shot on target from United in the first half, not a single shot just in general from United in the first half. Arsenal pack us, Man City pack us. Because you look at the quality of their teams, even their attack, as much as we don't rate Kai Havertz, Kai Havertz probably scores in that game. So just saying. But that's the difference of quality between all these three teams. And that's why I kind of agree with M. De Niro on why Liverpool are going to fall off. I feel like they're going to drop more points in certain games. Because a game like this, if they go to Everton, and Sean Dyche plays his bully football and that stinky football against this that system against this Liverpool team. They'll struggle. They don't have a, a good winning record at Everton in the past couple of years anyways. So who's to say they could get a draw? And a draw is enough for these for this team to fall out of this race. Easy. They, they still have to play Spurs as well. And De Niro's team. And De Niro's team, as much as you know, they've been conceding one goal and then coming from behind in most games, they will worry this Liverpool side for sure. And that's a concerning thing for all Liverpool fans at the moment. What I don't like, though, and why this is why I rate Hassam as a content creator and just a Liverpool fan itself, even though, you know, Liverpool are ops, is that he says it how it is. He's not on this, you know, 
um, thing where quad, we're going to win this quad. Look at us. We're on this. Yeah. Look, our team is full of kids, all this emotion. I don't like it when everyone just talks purely out of emotion. Right. And he's just being real and he sees his team. He knows the way his team is, his, the way his team is. A lot of people didn't predict United to even get a draw. I was scared myself. I thought it was going to be a packing. Me and Spooby did our match match preview for that game. Both of us pretty much. I mean, I went for a draw, just hoping that the result. Hey, would be listen, good, man. I told y'all, y'all was going, y'all was going to get points, man. Have faith in your team, fam. No, oh, man. Fuck. I, I don't have faith in Ten Hag at all. The Liverpool just didn't take their chances, and that's why we lose. And that's more on Liverpool because they're shit. That's really just. What and that's why I Eli. said y'all would get points. Yep, we'll yeah, go yeah. to you, Eli. Your thoughts on the game, um, Liverpool United game. Let us know, man. I'm gonna say this: United were very, very unfortunate because we all know that was not a penalty. We all know it. But again, like I said at the beginning of the show in the Chelsea segment, don't put yourself in that in that position for you know to make the ref make a decision because nine times out of ten he's gonna choose the attacker. You know, he's going to follow him. 16 times out of 10. Yeah, 16, yeah, times, 16 out times out of 10, it's going to go the attacker's way. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, it is what it is. At the end of the day, shouldn't be making that challenge in the box. Stay up. Stay up, stay up on your feet. Harvey Elliott was going nowhere fast. So, yeah, man, you know, it is what it is. Y'all y'all, y'all fought resiliently. I know some people say um, that y'all's team as a whole suck. Well, I will say this. Your midfield and your attack suck outside of Kobe Manu. And your defense is imperious. I can't lie, man. Your defense, I know a lot of people are saying y'all, y'all, y'all team is trash and y'all defense is trash, but just look at this. Look at it like this. If your team was trash, <clears throat> conceding 220 shots, I bet you at least half of them would have gone in, but they haven't. You know what I'm saying? So that that's just a testament to y'all's defensive now. That I will say that. You know, the likes of Varane, the likes of Johnny Evans, you know, the likes of uh, Lee Chu um, when they're off it. Uh, even Maguire has been playing decently. I can't lie. You know, he he even got done a few times, but, you know, he, he's well, held up pretty well. <laughs> and uh, Kambuala. Absolutely, bro. Kambuala. Yo, what a youth. What a signing. I mean, what a, what a, what a youth project, you know, what a youth. What what is he? Academy, yeah, academy prospect. What an academy prospect! Like he he's 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 been balling out every time I've seen him play. He hasn't really, you know, done too much wrong. You know, he's he's played well, and I just think that because y'all's defense is so good, a lot of the times if the teams like Liverpool don't take their chances, y'all always end up getting points out of something. You know what I'm saying? So I got I got to I got to hand it. I'm gonna give y'all a round of applause to y'all's defense. You know, y'all held Liverpool off well. You know, y'all ended up uh, – You know, I, I still think without that, y'all would win the game because Liverpool didn't look like scoring. They didn't. Like, that game could have kept going on for 100, 200 minutes, and Liverpool still wouldn't have scored again. So that's just a testament to y'all's defensive ability because if you look at it, there's other teams that's been conceding the around, around the same amount but have let in about – 80 goals, 50 goals, 60 goals. You know what I'm saying? They have a negative like 30, 40, 50 goal difference. Y'all only have negative one. So people can't say that y'all have a crap defense because y'all's defense is what's really saving y'all season right now. Because y'all, y'all, y'all realistically probably be you know lower than Chelsea right now, in my opinion. But yeah, like test like I said, testaments to y'all's defense. And shout out Kobe Manu for, you know. For scoring that goal. And I, I actually gotta give props to Bruno for having the um, you know, having a heads up to, you know, hit that ball one time into the back of the net. I like, you know, I may not like Bruno, but one thing he is good at is, you know, hoofing it, you know, <laughs> and that hoofing it <laughs> got y'all a goal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. He he was he was switched on at that moment, you know. Hey, 16, 16 out of ten goal for Bruno Fernandez, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that's Hey, hey, listen, man. He 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 did like outside of that, he was non-existent for that game. You know what I'm saying? He was pretty much kept giving the ball back to pool, yeah. stopping y'all's counterattacks because there was a bunch of attacks that y'all had that he just held y'all up. You know, man, that first and, half, uh, I think he had probably in consecutive like moments of the game, he probably had five or six touches of the ball, and at least five of them was him giving it away. And that shit was oh so yeah, one hundred percent, so frustrating. And I was literally like losing my shit on the watch along, but. Speaking of, speaking of uh, 16 out of 10, 
the story. By the way, but here can I we just are. say the two girls below us are looking 16 out of 10s today, both of them. <laughs> can I, can we just th this part is my favorite part of the clip this is actually my most favorite part of the clip like, <laughs> it's that smile there <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh shoot <laughs> she's oh, like oh man, crap just, just, <laughs> i just died all right big up the panel i told as for yeah. a story no 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 my favorite part is flawless bro flawless That's is like second hand, <laughs> that dead look on his face is just like <laughs> He's trying his hardest not to laugh. <laughs> you can tell. No, for real. Yeah, <laughs> that man. poker hey, face, bro. Liverpool, y'all can hold that. But since we are at you, Eli, we're gonna go to North London side of you know the footballing thing. We're gonna talk about your team. Like I said, the three point collectors, the team that looks like they are kind of the favorites to win the league at this moment. At least in my opinion, I don't really see a lot of games where I just well. I'll say this: teams can drop points. But when I look at the three teams and how they've been playing this season, I have to say Arsenal are probably the highest in terms of quality. Like you're able to get a Kai Havertz to to you know get GNA perform well, play the right way, all that type of stuff. And I you have to applaud Arsenal for that as much as I can say. But three no win against Brighton. Brighton didn't do Brighton did fuck all that game. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but happy with the win. Let us know your thoughts, bro. All right. Um... So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the the midweek game first, if that if that's cool. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Luton. So you guys played Luton two 0 against Luton. Yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. So Luton, I gotta give it up to my baller, Emil Smith Rowe. I need to see more of that man. I need to see more of him because that guy, so silky on the ball, great link up play, very aggressive, very like I I just feel like I keep saying this. I think Arteta should give him more of a chance. You know, I think he should get some more playing time. You know, especially here in these next few uh, these next few months is going to be crucial. We're gonna we're gonna need to rotate and be able to you know get something out of these guys. So it's good to it's good to see that he brought some of these players on and, and you know get them a little bit of match fitness and a little match readiness. And um, I mean that that's really all I got to say on the Luton game. Big up, big up to Odegaard. You know, fantastic performance. Imperious. Uh, defender from Gabriel and and um and Saliba. Gabriel, my 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 defender, <clears throat> best player on the team at the moment, in my opinion. Um, I just feel like since Saliba's there, you know, everybody's harping on Saliba because he's so silky on the ball and all that. But I still think Gabriel has probably been our best defender, you know, for the last almost two years, about 18, 19 months, he's been our best defender. Um. Zinchenko came back into the team the past two games. I, I didn't like it. I didn't like what I saw. We look way more defensively sound with Tommy Asu and uh, even even Kivior at left back. You know what I'm saying? Because they're actually defenders. Zinchenko, I don't want to ever see him at left back again for us ever, ever because he's just a liability. Every like you seen, you seen in that Brighton game especially, Adingra was on the right side you know, going against Ben White. But then as soon as they saw that it was Zinchenko, switched him over to that side ASAP, you know what I'm saying, to get at him. Like, yeah. to him, he played well for the most part, but there was times where he got skint, you know what I'm saying? So I, I don't I don't, I don't like seeing that. Like, if you're I remember gonna... there was, like, one moment, sorry to cut you off, there was, like, one moment where someone played a simple ball to Zinchenko and he couldn't even, like, control it. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a uh it was a back pass. It was a back pass and uh like that. That's yeah yeah he chested it down and it went like past him and it ended up with the dinger and I was like bro yo Zinchenko you literally saw this the whole way why you you're you're a midfielder you're supposed to be you know quality on the ball but you just let it roll past you like it wasn't nothing you know but yeah that 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 just goes to show you without like if you look at all the games that we've won or drew or that you know that we've won in this run Guess who's guess what the common denominator is? Jesus and Zinchenko haven't been playing. Yeah. So that that's that's all I gotta say about that. You know, I don't I don't want to see them starting for us again. You know, I, I just don't think they're the levels. I think they drag this team down. To be fair, I was excited when I saw them coming in because I saw I saw that I thought that they were gonna be playing in their right positions, which I thought Zinchenko was gonna be playing in midfield. 
because I never saw him as a left back, and we don't keep the ball like City do. So I thought he was going to be in the midfield, which I hope he plays from now on, you know, coming as backup for Odegaard or something like that, um, because he can play in that 10 row or that that eight row, uh, right side at eight that, 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 that he plays in. Um, but, yeah, I just don't think he – I don't want to see him at left back. Jesus, he was supposed to be a striker. We 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 now know that he's not a striker. You know what I'm saying? He's not even a winger. I think he's just somebody that plays across the front line as uh, as uh, somebody so poignantly put it. You know what I'm saying? With the with a certain Kai Havertz. Shout out to troops. <laughs> I think he he's uh, of the same vein of player. I don't I don't think he. Uh, no, I don't. I don't like him on the. I don't like him on the wing. The only thing he's good at on wing play is defensive. Is is defensively. That's that's all he. That's that's what our has been using him for, because you've seen him cut inside and he takes like ten touches when he should only take one or two, and it, and the chance ends up going away. You know he doesn't even try to you know pass anybody in. Like yeah, he he's very good on the ball or whatever, but his intelligence in terms of defense. Uh, the uh, decision making in the final third is very lacking and and it shows because he slows our offense down and we don't score as many goals with him in the side so i i don't want to see him starting again for us i want to like it, as much as it pains me to say this i never thought i would be saying this at the start of the season i want to see a front three of trossard martinelli and Havertz. i don't want to i even want to see Saka sit down you know what I'm saying? Because he hasn't really been doing anything this year. And especially in this run, he, he's gone missing yet again. I don't want to hear, you know, anything about injuries. If you play, I want to see you perform at your best. I don't care if you're injured or not. Like, even if you're injured, you should still find a way to impact the game, which Saka hasn't really been doing as of late. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I just, I just, I think our best starting line, best uh, front line is probably going to be Havertz. Chossard and Martinelli, in my opinion. Can Saka come on? You know, yeah. I would I would love for him to come on, you know, in the second half, do a little something, some, but at, in, in terms of starting, I think he needs to sit down, you know, assess us, you know, kind of take a look in the mirror, you know, you know, look at the man in the mirror, as a as a famous singer used to say, you know, in the in the song. But yeah, I just I just it's been it's been good, but we also got to look at the bad as well. Because just because you win a game doesn't mean everybody played well. And Saka was one of the people that didn't that didn't play well. He stat padded, yes. He stat padded. What else did you do? Right. What else did you do? But uh, yeah, it was it was two good two good uh, three point collecting fixtures for us. You know, we got to see Smith Rowe play. Hopefully, we get to see more of that. Hopefully, Saka's. Uh, obviously Saka's going to start against Byron, but hopefully Saka will be able to get some more rest, quote unquote. Maybe he can get firing again. I don't know. But th- this team definitely needs more of Trossard because he is our Jota. Let's be real. He's our Jota. He's going to he's gonna bag when whenever we need him to, just like that third goal against uh, Brighton. That, yo, that was cold. Just chip the goalkeeper too. like it wasn't nothing. Yeah. Hey, I, I want to see my striker doing that and, and Trossard. Trossard is him, in my opinion, you know, when he's on it. Just needs a running games. Uh, Havertz, been playing well. Obviously, you already know how I feel about Declan Rice. You know how I feel about my defense. Raya, he's been playing pretty well. His kicking has been a bit sus lately, but that just goes to show you we need a striker. Go get us Tony. Yeah. Fair enough. Before I do go uh, over to everybody else, I'll ask you real quick. So, obviously, Arsenal do go a little bit of a tough run of fixtures now. Um, I think this month is probably the most crucial month for your team. Um, You play, let's see, you play Villa next in the league. You obviously play Bayern before that. After Villa, you play Wolves um, on the Saturday. So, um, yeah, your thoughts going into into these tough run of fixtures. After Wolves, you play Chelsea. I think in between then you have, uh, oh, right after that, you have Spurs, uh, North London, North London Derby. So, tough couple of games for Arsenal. you think you you think Arsenal, you know, have a chance of dropping points? Are you confident in the team? Just yeah, what are your thoughts going into this this run of fixtures? Honestly, as long as we don't play Zinchenko at left back and Gabriel Jesus is on the bench, mm-hmm. I have faith that 
we may not be dropping points because if we didn't drop points against City, if we didn't drop points against Liverpool, you know, if we didn't drop points against any of these other teams, because I feel like the beginning of the season, he was kind of experimenting with this style of play before he finally just perfected it. And so I feel like as long as we don't play them, we should be okay. I think we should be okay. You know, don't, don't, don't bring on any of these meaty subs either. I don't, I don't need to see you trying to, you know, sabotage our chances of winning our title. You, you, you know, that Zinchenko has been a problem. We haven't had that many issues ever since you took him out the team, you know, which is a sign. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have got, gave away, um, uh, Tierney. We should have kept Tierney. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's another left back option. Same thing with um yeah, I just I just think as long as as long as we don't have Zinchenko at left back, if we don't have get if we don't have Jesus up top, you know, clogging everything up, I think we should be okay. I think we should be okay. Fair enough. Because defensively, enough. it is very hard to score goals against us. I mean, we we've only conceded what 24 goals this whole year. Mm-hmm. 24 goals in the league, so we'll see. Fair enough, fair enough. Cool. We'll go to the rest of the people. Spoofs, we'll go to you. Your thoughts about Arsenal's run, obviously beating uh, Brighton 3-0 and then Luton as well, 2-0. Your thoughts, bro? Uh, yeah, I'm impressed by Arsenal. I kind of just want to talk to Eli about tomorrow night, and I just want to ask him what he thinks Arsenal are going to play. Like, Do you think they will come out firing? Will they take the game to Bayern, or do you think it'll be cautious, like kind of feel the game out and then go for it, or do you just think straight away they'll just out the door? I think they're going to be a bit cautious um, just because of, you know, what I've seen in the previous games. We've been a little bit more cautious trying to, you know, feel the game out a little bit before we go on attack because uh, we did the same thing against Brighton. Like we, we kind of sat in a little bit, let them, you know, have a little bit a little bit of possession before we just took the game to him. And, and I think that's due to how we finished last season. You know, we, we bottled it. Like, let's be real. We bottled it. So he's taking a little bit of a, a pragmatic approach to the, the latter half of the season, you know, kind of sussing teams out and then hitting them on the break. So this game, Martinelli's going to start 100% because we're going to look to hit him in transition because they're going to have a uh, Upa Makano, AKA the uh the Bozo Gene of France. And then we're, they're also gonna have uh Eric Dyer. <laughs> yeah, we all know we all know what Eric Dyer is. So that it their their defense is gonna be a little that it's gonna be open, it's gonna be there for the taking. Kimmich ain't fast. Like, yes, he's he's very intelligent, but he's not fast. So the only speed that they got is Alfonso Davies in the back line. But you know, it's just one. That's just one person. And Upa Makano, he's he's gonna have a mistake in him. So we're gonna we're gonna play it safe. We're gonna play it safe, and we're gonna hit him on the break. Obviously, they're gonna be uh, you know, they're gonna be points in the game where we where we have the ball and we're gonna take it to him. But um, yeah, I think we're gonna play it safe, and then we're gonna we're gonna try to play to get at least two or three goals to take into the Allianz Arena, and then we're just gonna set up shop and just play stinky negative. Well, I'm not gonna say negative. We're gonna play. Jose Mourinho ball where we just sit and then break. That's that's yeah. exactly how we're gonna play it. Fairs. Fairs. Fair enough. Fair enough. Anything else, boobs, to add before I go to Kirby? Um, no. Just I hope Arsenal win the league. Um, yeah, that's it. Fair enough. I mean, De Niro doesn't really agree with that, but we'll, we'll, we'll get his. <laughs> he'll get his. He'll get his. <laughs> his as well. Uh, Kirby, we'll go to you. Kirby, we'll go to you. Um, your thoughts on the Arsenal game? Obviously, these are your ops. I know you have a lot probably to say, but first, you know. first, I want to say uh, the views of Spooby do not reflect the rest of the <laughs> panel and in the show. Um, especially me and De Niro over our dead bodies, over our dead goddamn <laughs> bodies. <laughs> I don't want Arsenal to win for this. Are you insane? Um, first, I want to, well, yeah, they played well against Luton, but Brighton, this is the the thing with Deserby, right? Like, he kind of like, oh my God. Actually, I was going to say something, but never mind. De Niro, my bad. Um, you know, I don't care. Like De Niro, like De Niro, he lives by the sword, he dies by the sword, kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, we have a style of play. And we're never going to change from it. And if we concede three and lose this game, 
we are probably going to win the next game with this play style and let's persist with it. Um, I think I, I'm surprised by you saying Saka not in the team. I get he's not playing well, but then I feel like isn't he your X factor? Like I thought you would be like Martinelli, Trossard, and then Saka. Um, just in general, because at least he attracts players. Because you were saying Havertz, but uh, she can you just bring that up for me if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no I have it ready. Hold up. There we go. So I'm not saying you again, Eli, but a lot of Arsenal fans have been saying, you know, he's playing way better. He's literally producing the exact same stats he did last year. He will guarantee you an average of 15 goals in all comps and around four to like six assists in the league. He has not gotten better, guys. He is the exact same player he was with us, and he's and he's in a better team with you guys. So even if he scores a little bit more, it's because he's in a better team. What are we doing? I can get it more so as like a an option in terms of let's say you're you want to defend your lead and it's later in the half sure the aerial threat or just an aerial threat in general in a second half if you're trying to get a goal but i'm i'm more so surprised either by you saying you want Havertz in that false nine striker position because i thought trossard in the striker false nine position and then martinelli and soccer well that's, that's the thing so the reason i was saying that is because what you can do with that, you can. It doesn't necessarily have to end at being a false nine because Arteta likes to. He likes to play some sort of jammy formation where Havertz will he'll he'll start off as a false nine, but then he'll drop back in the midfield, and then you'll see, like if Trossard is playing, he'll he'll drop into that false nine role, and then Martinelli will probably stay out wide, or he'll he'll switch with Martinelli, and then Martinelli, you know, he'll make those runs in the middle. So it's 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 just uh it's basically for fluidity for fluidity okay. sake. But would Trossard do the same thing? Like I feel like Trossard would inter- not drop down to the midfield, but he would still do the interchanging of play with. Martin oh no! Lally yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Like I I wouldn't be mad at any formation. Like be it, like even if Saka were to come back into the team, just yeah. as long as Trossard and Martinelli, those are those are two sure. players that I <laughs> want one hundred percent. Like Havertz and Saka, you can. Okay. Either or, it don't matter. It don't matter. You know, you you're basically gonna get the same thing, in my opinion. Because wow, okay. as of right now, like based on on current form, on current form, like it don't matter which one of those two you put in the team. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to ask you about like I know you talked about it with Bayern a bit, but this whole run of games you have, including the Bayern fixtures, then you have Villa, then you have Wolves, and then you have Hus. Us and Spurs. Like, do you honestly think you're not gonna at least draw one of these games? Because you're saying the way we're going, and if we, since we didn't lose to City and we beat Liverpool the way we did, I think we'll be undefeated in these coming games. But it's like that's a lot of intense games in a very congested period of time in general against some of your biggest rivals where we can say the derby flies out the window right like like i thought we were gonna get battered the first time we played you i know you guys have hunkered down on a formation now like you were alluding to but like i'm not saying we're gonna beat you but i don't like you know even with spurs like it's a north london derby and you're playing them at spurs like at at their stadium right so it's like do you not feel like you're not gonna lose any points or lose a game Let's say it's a Bayern game. Let's say you beat them 3-0 this game, and the next game you might lose like 1-0. Do you not see you dropping off at any of these games at any point? It, I mean, honestly, it all depends on how we do because at the end of the day, I feel like football is a, a lot of momentum. It has a lot to do with momentum and, and, and you know, mentality. So if we go into, you know, this Bayern game, we win, that's going to give us a lot of confidence going forward into – you know, the Aston Villa game, we beat Aston Villa, then that's going to increase our confidence levels going into the next Bayern Munich leg. And if we, we just got to continue winning. And luckily, in my opinion, I, I like this better than, you know, 
having a week in between games because that can that keeps the players locked in. They're like, okay, we got three games to the we got we got three days to the next match. Boom, boom, boom. Next match. Boom, boom, boom. Next match. You know, and and it keeps the players locked in and focused. And if Arteta, like he's been in he's been in the locker room with Pep, so he knows what it takes to, you know, win things. You know what I'm saying? You know, take one game at a time. So that's what he's going to be telling his players. It's like one game at a time. Like we we know the heartbreak that we went through last year. You know what I'm saying? Like not 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 that I'm saying that I'm Arteta in or that uh that I that I won't have it out that I'm that I'm a Havertz hater or whatever the case may be. Because let, let's let's keep it a buck. I didn't want Havertz here. I didn't want him. I didn't want him, but when once he gets here, I want him to succeed. You know what I'm saying? So I want I want everybody to succeed, Arteta included. Like I may be Arteta out, but he has to prove me wrong. And he's been proving me wrong. Like as long as he can continue to prove me wrong, I'll be on his side. As soon as he drops it, back out, back out the door. So it just really depends on how he sets us up. And if he can help us through this, I mean, that that's really all that that's really all there is to it. Like just play the formation that works. Don't chop and change. Don't try to be pep. Just keep yeah. being you and don't play. I mean, don't play uh, Zinchenko. Do not play Gabriel Jesus. And I feel like we'll be fine. Is there a possibility that we can that we can drop points? Yes. Yes, there is, because all of these teams are going to be playing like it's their cup final. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how they always play towards the end of the season, especially against hated rivals or, you know, especially if they didn't, if they don't have anything else to play for. They're just like, OK, I just want to be the ultimate killjoy. So every team is going to be playing us hard. So it's important for us to stay locked in and having games every three days is probably the best way for us to stay locked in. So can we draw points? Yes, we can drop points, but do I think we we drop points as long as we keep playing the way we're playing and eking out these wins, no matter how we get these wins, I think that's going to give the team the mentality to keep pushing and possibly win it. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll go to you, M. De Niro. Real quick, before we do go to you, there's a question from Pat MC 93 Big up to you. I know he's a Spoopy's bro. Big up to you every single time, bro. He says, Eli, why are you Arteta out? Can you not see the improvement since he joined? All right, so the reason I'm Arteta out, one trophy out of a possible 16. In four and a half years of coaching this team, one trophy out of a possible 16 ain't good enough. You know, even though I started watching Arsenal in 2015, you know, I went back and I watched a lot of film. I watched a lot of, you know, the, you know, early days Arsenal. So, like, when Wenger first started, I saw him winning leagues. I saw, I saw us winning leagues, winning titles, uh, winning winning a lot of different trophies, even though we never got the Champions League. But, you know, we were still challenging for trophies. And we won more than we lost. So, now, you know, seeing us continue to lose and continue to make these idiotic mistakes and have these idiotic decisions, you know, I just feel like a club of Arsenal stature should have gotten rid of Arteta a long time ago. If, you know, if we're supposed to be this big elite club and one one trophy out of 16, just not good enough. And then you sign in essentially the equivalent of three teams and only one, I, w- I wouldn't say five, maybe six of your signings kick on that's not that's not good enough that's not good enough for an arsenal football club you know what i'm saying because man united wouldn't take it chelsea wouldn't take it you know city wouldn't take it so why should we real madrid yeah. wouldn't take it you know what i'm saying that they, they would have got rid of him ages ago you know that that's that's all i got to say about that but like i said he's here i want him to succeed i want him to prove me wrong Please prove me wrong because I actually do want to win something. But until you prove otherwise, out my dough, out my club, please. Please and thank yeah. you. He also says, but think about the tra- amount of trash he has moved out of the club, the squad he has built now can and should win his trophies. I understand your point. I hope he proves you wrong to sure and I do. And that's my biggest thing on him too is that you've said it to yourself. Look at the amount of trash he's moved out of the club. The squad he has built now can and should win his trophies. But you have So it. that's debatable. That that's insane. debatable. Because we still got Enkedi on the books, got yeah. rid of Balogun. You know, yeah, we still we still got. Is, uh, I think 
I think many. this Arsenal squad was is capable of winning domestic trophies. I just think Arteta doesn't take these domestic trophies seriously. And that's his whole thing on why I don't know why he, you know, decides like last year, he focused solely on the league. Everybody was on this whole thing where, yeah, the league is in our hands, bigger fish to fry, all that type of stuff. And then look what ended up happening. Um, so the thing is, when you are a coach, especially at a big club, winning these domestic trophies should not be the end all, but it should actually be the bare minimum because you as a club like this should be getting trophies. In our worst few periods, we've still won domestic trophies. Chelsea, in their worst few period this year, went to a Carabao Cup final, are now in a FA Cup semifinal. We can talk as much shit as we want about Chelsea, but they're there, you know? And I'm not applauding them being there in the conversation, but it's more of to say, look at their squad. Is their squad good enough to win those? Probably not. But their squad, our te- uh, Arsenal squad, is good enough to win these type of trophies. And that really does dampen Arteta's, you know, managerial career too. Let's say he does end up not winning this league this year, right? Does Arteta deserve to go to a different club, to a much bigger club? No, it's only downhill from here because what credit does he have in the bank? And that also questions a lot of Arteta's credibility itself. Is he a world-class coach if he hasn't really won a lot of these trophies that he should be winning? And it all comes down to that. I just think, yes, you've gotten your squad to where this squad needs to be in terms of challenging. Like, he's done that, and credit to him. When he does leave, I'm, I'm pretty sure... A good amount of Arsenal fans, I don't know about Eli, but a good amount of Arsenal fans will respect the fact that he's brought Arsenal to this stage. And that's what I've said, too. Arsenal are at a great stage right now. All they are lacking is a world-class coach to, to get them over the line. And that's because that probably is what does it for them. Whether they win the league this year or not, we'll find out. But if they don't, that's one thing that I'm looking at for sure, that a better coach could definitely bring this team to you know at least winning some sort of domestic trophies or get him over the line of winning that league or potential Champions League. But that's just where I stand. And Joel says, too, Arteta has successfully dropped the standards of Arsenal. 100%. 100%. Because now Arsenal fans, some Arsenal fans are okay with just being in the Happy with mediocrity. Yeah. Happy just just to be in the conversation. Just to be Happy to just be in the top four race. We should be pushing for the title every single season. Exactly. I'm not hearing anything less than that. I don't know if you guys remember, but Arsenal fans back in the day were, were you know, um, going up against, going after Arsene Wenger for consistently getting them in the top four. And now they're applauding that. Now it's being applauded by just being in conversations. Arsenal, them, Wenger keeping them in the top four is now Arteta's conversation of bringing them to a title race. It's the same thing. Time to take being the next step. When so- hey, we yeah, better we win the league this year. Yes, you better, you better win yeah, the league yeah, this year. Yeah, if we yeah. don't win it this year, yeah. it's gonna be long. Yeah, boy. It's gonna be long. Because yeah. not only will the rival game. fans be cooking us, yeah. the rivals will also be getting stronger. I getting will better be coaches, cooking. getting better I players. Be yeah, bro. We have to Damn, win the league this year. Keep going, bro. Have keep, to. Yeah, yeah. Go on, keep going, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, before, before I hey, before I do get to M. De Niro's part of the segment because I know he's ready for this, but. Are you guys not entertained? Yo, run up the likes. I know we we're at like 18 likes. Yo, keep running up the likes. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't go anywhere either because right after this NM De Niro's Tottenham segment, we will be doing the Mud Brother Challenge where you guys have no, you guys, there's no, um, there's no surprise on who it's going to be, but you you can see us suffer. So M. De Niro, floor is yours. I know you're waiting. You're ready for this. Yeah. Arsenal, talk about Arsenal and then we're going to go to, to, to Spurs. Like, no, obviously, I didn't, I didn't see the, um, the Luton game, I saw the Brighton game in it, but obviously yeah. with the Luton game, what I will say is that obviously I heard everybody talking about Smith Rowe, and mm-hmm. as for the for for the people that know me that are gonna watch this, but that talk to me about football, I just want you to know that remember what I said about Smith Rowe before when you lot were all down playing him when obviously he was unfit and whatever, and everybody was saying, "No, oh, he's not good enough. He's not this." Because I told people about Smith Rowe, I said that his fundamentals that he had when he was coming up in academy, like I've seen him. You get it. I've seen him live or in person from academy till now. His fundament his fundamentals that he gauges are very good. Like he has good fundamentals. It was just obviously, you know, injuries and all these things can just make your make certain things be more of a um a, uh, uh, it can just be make, make everything a bit more harder, of course, in it. So he's picked up a lot of injuries, whatever. But one thing you can never take away from a player is that quality, and he's always had that quality. 
And I've seen that quality. Even when he was carrying you, man, with Saka before, when he was carrying Arsenal before, people forget these things quickly. Yeah, it's easy. Do. Football fans are quick to just say, yeah, this guy's rubbish. He, he was the bad. original star boy. You, you man, that, man made a whole rant, like a chant after him. Saka and Emil Smith Rowe, like the whole chant. I remember that shit. When you guys See, were fighting for top four, Smith Rowe was there. He was on smoke is. towards the end of the season. And it is what it is. Go on, MJ. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah, he's his facts. What you're saying, Sheik, is facts. Like, even not to say he is Jack Grealish, but they share some similar qualities in their game. I see that too. They know how I to carry that. up, put, they know how to carry the ball, they some they know how to draw in players for fouls and stuff like that. Like that. They both they, they, you get what I'm saying? Like he's a top player. And one thing I'll say yeah. about him is that um it's one of those things where you're seeing it now. If you got given the opportunities, I think you would have seen it way more. Yes, I can't lie. There was a time where Arteta's played him and then he's got injured straight away or whatever. But you know what? It's sometimes in in in, in football where you got to just sometimes stick it out with certain players. The same way Arteta's sticking it out with Saka is the same way that he could stick it out with Smith Rowe. I personally yeah. even think that if I Smith agree. Rowe was even in this team, maybe who knows, boy? This league title might have even been done and dusted maybe even before now. Do you get what I'm saying? Because I think there was a time where obviously your team was trying to draw and then obviously you lost party. But I think if Smith Rowe had come into the team as maybe not, like as just to play in that midfield three, that midfield three of Smith Rowe and Odegaard and Declarez to me seems kind of, do you get me? That seems kind of scary still. And that's me as a rival fan saying that. Like, that seems, and that's why I rate Arteta. And that's why I am Arteta in because. <laughs> he makes certain silly mistakes like that. That's why Arsenal will always, for me, if you win the league, fairs in it. I take back what I say, but for now, I'm gonna keep. This is why I say Arsenal's downfall is our title because I think sometimes there's so many decisions that he makes that, like, I'm just thinking to myself, bro, like these decisions you're making, they don't need to be made. You wanna play Havertz and just force the Havertz thing? Yes, he's scoring two two goals now and whatever, but. Like, if we look at the teams he's scoring against, it's like, cool. I'm not taking away from goals. Goals is goals, isn't it? You score goals. But just as you've seen there with that stat, he scored a similar amount of goals that he scored when he was at Chelsea. It's nothing special. Players score goals. Do you get what I'm saying? Players score goals. Richarlison was scoring goals. We weren't overhyping him like how man are hyping Havertz. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, like, at the end of the day, um, yeah, but to the Smith Rowe thing, at the end of the day, man, like, some players just, they have that quality and the quality has always been there. It's just Arteta that was choosing to ignore it and be stubborn. I don't know what the reason is for. We're not in the change room. We don't know in it. But at the end of the day, I've always seen that quality. So I'm not surprised that this has happened. It was always due to happen. You get me? So now nah, big up uh, Smith Rowe, even though you play for the rival team. But nah, I've seen him from young and I know that you get me. He holds that quality in him. So that's the Smith Rowe part. And obviously, I heard Arsenal dominate the game. It's an expected win against Luton anyways. I expected Arsenal to win that game. So, yeah, man. But um, to the Brighton game. Now, I rate Tariq Lamptey so highly. But you are an absolute donor. There was no need yeah. for you to be doing all of that. Your team is even playing well. Like Brighton actually started off well. That's what I'll even say. They started off well. They, both teams were going blow for blow. Arsenal hadn't even touched full pace yet. Then you just go and do that. And then obviously, I know how this season is. I know, see me, I know Arsenal in it. I know Arsenal. Let Arsenal score one goal with this team they have. They're winning that game. That's the reality of the situation. There's no comeback. There's no none of that. As soon as Arsenal scored that first goal, I said, yeah, it's done, man. It's game over. Because one thing I've seen about Arsenal is that, just like Eli said, obviously, football's a momentum game. And Arsenal are one of the main teams that thrive on momentum, bro. Because mm -hmm. I'm telling you now, I said a statement that people may say unpopular or whatever. But I actually said, you see that game when Arsenal played against Chelsea early on in the season? If Arsenal had lost that game, they would not be at the point they're in now. Where they managed to keep these certain games is why they're at the point they are now. Because Arsenal is a momentum-based team because of the fact they got still got young players in their squad. And it's one of those ones where even last season you saw it. It was all momentum. Like, you get me, yeah, we're winning week in, week out, blah, blah, blah. But then as soon as they get a result, that just affects mentality once again mentality but not to do with the manager i just think is having a lot of young players in a team who haven't really won a lot of things yet but it's like what happens with arsenal is they play a certain team even the brighton game they were playing brighton brighton were going to for them everything was calm brighton i was even hoping if they got to half time no no 
Arsenal's mentality now gets into panic. I see, I see that all the time with Arsenal. That would have been a panic mode station. But where Lamptey decided to be an absolute donor and go and give away the penalty, it was only inevitable that these lot were gonna beat Brighton. And then the thing is what, what I see with a lot of Arsenal fans is that your team is winning, yes. We see, we and we'll give you your ratings for winners. I'm giving you your ratings right now. People say, oh, I'm chatting, I'm chatting, but I'll, I'm giving you your ratings right now, yeah? You lot, winning games is what you need to do. That's the main part, you get me? You're now in, in the pivotal part of the season where you know we need to win games, we need to win games. So now what I'm going to say to you lot now where my problem comes is that you're winning certain games, all this on the bounce and all of this, yeah. First of all, take a look at the teams that you beat. Now you're into a part of the season where you're going to be playing some real big boys, isn't it? And when you come to the lane, yeah, unpopular um, opinion, when you come to the lane, make sure you grab them three points, boy, because I'm telling you now, if we are the ones, now if we are the ones that ruined this title race for you, everybody block me off the internet. Take me, off the, <laughs> take me completely off the internet because I'm telling man. Nah, I'm gonna just have to hold that because because this is the thing, bro. Like what annoys me with Arsenal fans now because I've given you your ratings now, so nobody can say I'm petty. What annoys me with you lot is oh we play the best football in the league. Oh we're the second best team in the world. Oh you know in the Champions League we're the second best team in the champs. Whoa our team most of our players should be in the starting eleven of of a champs uh, a champs all time whatever blah 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 all this nonsense yeah. Then you go to flipping City you park eleven man behind the ball. Then you're talking about oh yeah we we do this we're gonna park eleven man and ball and play a trans uh, play a transition football again in them games just so that we can get a point or get points out of the game. But if I'm correct, a team who's meant to be the best playing football team in the league, wouldn't you have gone to City and played your football? That's what I don't understand. And people will say, oh, why are you going back to the game? That game's already done. I will go back to that game because you lot just chat. You just keep going and going and yapping and yapping. And the thing about your yapper that you don't really use your brain to think about is, remember the season, I can't remember the exact points, but remember the season when Liverpool were, were, were chasing the league they got to, what, the final day? And then City picked them to it. And what was that, 98 points? Or what was it, 98 points or something like that? Yeah. So what makes you lot think that that can't happen to you? I just, this is the thing that you lot don't understand. You lot talk like you've won, like, four leagues in, 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 in these whole years that you've been playing since Wenger left. You're talking like you've won, like, four leagues. But uh, you had one season last season that was good, fair enough. You're having another season where you've got an opportunity. And I'm telling you now, if you man don't win this season, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Next season, next season, I don't want to hear no chat from no one's mouth. Like, I don't want to hear none of it. And the thing that you don't need to once again understand, bro, is your chatter is what is going to get you in trouble, mate. Your chatter will get you in trouble. So for you Arsenal fans, enjoy it right now. But... Like I said, M. De Niro makes the statement. When you come to the lane, bro, get them three points, you know? And when even when you go to Old Trafford, bro, get them three points. I don't want to hear no draws. I don't want to hear no draws. Get them three points. Because I know what you lot are like when you go to Old Trafford. All the Man United fans can say, yeah, we're dead, we're rubbish, bro. Man knows what it's like, bro. Because even early on in the season, they could have done you with this dead team that they had. So, and in fact, Banda, when you go to, when you play Chelsea as well, make sure you get them flipping three points, mate. When you play Chelsea, because if Paul Palmer dunks on you, Paul Palmer and friends, I will be there, bro. Listen, I'm rattled, bro. I don't even give a talk. Bro, Arsenal fans, I am stating this now. Make sure you get these three points. I don't want no draws. Make sure you get three points because I will be there. I told Ben already, clip me. Do whatever you need to do. At the end of the season, if you man don't win the league, I am going to the Emirates and I am going to have a motive outside the Emirates. I promise. So please, just get them. Sorry, last, last, last thing. You better not play any defensive football against all of us. You can say that against Man City, but if you play defensive football against any of our teams, I don't care if you win 1-0. I don't care. You guys are bottle jobs. You absolute hypocritical frauds. Battering Porto. Talking talk about Porto. Talking about Porto playing negative 
ter- terrible football and then you lose this shit. Huh? And we're shittier than you guys, right? You guys could say, oh, Man City are as good as us or better than us. We're the shittier teams, right? All three of us here. So you better not play negative football against us. I want attacking, free-flowing football. I want 60% possession. 60%. Make sure, Arsenal, bro. I'm telling you, when you play when you play Bayern Munich here, this ain't no of none of these average strikers anymore, bro. You're dealing with Harry Kane now. Let's see what your two centre-backs are made of when he's around the corner. Let's see about that. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, moving on to the other North London This team. is me. This is me paying for the sins of my fan base, people. It, it, it really is, man. It really is. Yeah, your fan base will be moving crazy. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, we go on to Spurs, the other three-point collector this weekend. Um, 3-1 uh, win against Forrest. Chris Wood, absolute shocking of a player. I can't believe that miss that he won that one miss where he hit the post. Uh stinky, so fucking stinky, bro. Chris Wood, man, terrible. You should look at yourself as a as a professional footballer. But anyways, we move. Spurs do the business yet again. Obviously, um uh midweek fixture was West Ham. Um one one draw with West Ham. We'll hear M. De Niro's thoughts on both games. But yes, M. De Niro, feeling happy about this win. Title uh the top four race is still on. Obviously, Villa play Arsenal next week. So potential for them to drop points and you guys to take a leap. But yeah, man, let us know how you feel. Yeah, Villa, don't drop points in it. We don't need you to drop points. We'll win our game in it, so don't don't really. But we can drop points in the next game. But um, nah, man, yeah, man, three one. Like I said once again, it's similar to the the couple games we've had. First of all, we need to stop conceding sloppy goals early on in games, which is just what has just been normal to us recently. But yeah, man, three one controlled the game. I think I don't think they really Nottingham Forest really offered nothing apart from the wood chance and then obviously their goal. But yeah, man, like we won the game. It's normal for us, not like United. You get me? So obviously, like bro, like I, I give I give players their ratings where where is due. I think obviously, um, I think Pat Matasar, like you get me, played well engine as usual you get me always putting in a shift i think even um ben and uh, uh coming on as well when he came on he did well i think uh obviously brennan johnson was hyped because he's playing his old team so he played all right i think timo werner i'll give timo werner played well against forest still he played well played very well against forest i'll give him but the thing with timo that i have is just even when he plays well, he just still looks like a Chelsea player, like the same Chelsea player. Like when he was at Chelsea, like he will play well, but it's like, it's like, it's not nothing I don't expect you to do. It's like his playing well is still like dead, basically. His playing well is still not anything great. It's just that like, you played well, I'll give you your ratings for playing well, innit? But yeah, man, like Timo Werner played well. Obviously, Son played well. Uh, Van der Ven, like I can't lie, he's looking like he's going to be a top centre back. Um, for times to come, I think his pace is amazing. Um, I think he for the center back to be that fast is crazy to me, isn't it? Like it's very wild to me. But yeah, man, like um, yeah, man, there's not much too much because it wasn't a great game. I'll be real. We just dominated the game and slapped them three one. You get me? Not like I said, nothing like United. Do you see? It's not like United. We we beat Nottingham for us with ease. You know, like that. We don't struggle against these guys and that. So yeah, man. Nah, just a quick free one. But for the West Ham game, um, the West Ham game, you could actually say that um, West Ham could have um, pipped, could have pipped us in that game as well. Even though we had chances, but they could have pipped us in that game as well. And I just think when we're playing against these teams, and if you want to be like, because obviously I'm just saying that he wants to battle for for titles. Obviously, if we're going to be playing against these teams next season, we can't even be making all these games harder than it needs to be in it. So I think if you want to be a, a title challenging team, when you come to these games against certain teams that aren't in form or in good form, sorry, that aren't in good form, then make sure that you're beating them, like how Arsenal are beating these smaller teams as well. Because that's what a title race requires, isn't it? When you're in a title race, make sure you're you're showing, you're making statements every game that you play in it. So. I think obviously, yeah, man. Uh, the West Ham game it was it wasn't the best game. Once again, it's still poor from us. Need to stop conceding sloppy goals. Um, uh, Basuma needs to wake up because he's been poor. 
for the last couple of games he's been absolutely poor i don't know what's going on there because obviously as a player we know what he's capable of we know the fundamentals that he has but that recently i don't know it's just lack of concentration i don't have a clue what to say about it but i just can see that his form is um his form isn't great right now but yeah man spurs you see we have us man now with tottenham what i would say is that there's not too much on tottenham because at the end of the day like i think we're just in that transition stage obviously new manager trying to work out what his plans are trying to work out what what the future might be looking like for for the club so i think this season is why there's not too much on us but i think obviously when summer comes next season there's going to be a lot in it every game now is going to be judged next summer because obviously i'm giving him the benefit of the doubt and the leeway with certain games because obviously like i said new manager hasn't got all the players that he wants hasn't got all the uh the, the things that he he his fundamentals given to him so we will see what happens in the summer but i think in the summer we guarantee need a striker man definitely need a striker i think we need a striker and maybe i think a striker and maybe i'll say a striker one one striker a winger and then maybe just like a rap another right back another right back maybe i would say or if anything a striker and then a right back and a left back just two backups i'll take still because i think in 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 center back where we got dragerson i'm all right with that and then obviously we got um we have another center the young center back the the um What's his name? I think it's Ashley something or whatever his name is. But yeah, we got him there. So we'll see if um Ange Ashley Williams, I believe. Yeah, Ashley Williams, that's it. So we'll see if um Ange includes him. So yeah, man. That at the end of the day, nah, nah, impossible, Joe. Impossible. I don't want that swab at my club, bro. Impossible, bro. This Chelsea, another thing. This this Chelsea links to Tottenham, like always with all these Chelsea links. Like, bro, don't bring Conor Gallagher to my club because I will step to the training ground. Don't bring Broja to my club. I don't want him. Like, he's not either the worst player, but Mando, he's not needed at all. And Timo Werner, like, like I said once again, like, you get me, you did all you, you're doing all right, but you, yeah, you, you're not Jesus. <laughs> I don't want to see you at this club anymore. Like you're 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 doing your job as a loanee. As a loanee, I'll give him your ratings as a loanee, but as a permanent player, impossible, bro. And the thing is, what's crazy, yeah, guys. I actually think that Timo Werner would probably even stay. That's how crazy it is that I can actually see I'm that. I'm waiting. Happen. Don't worry, Andrew. I'm waiting, man. I'm waiting. I hope not. I I I really I, I really hope not. But yeah, man. Like like I said. Nothing too much on it. Like we won three one, we drew one one. But like I said, it's not as bad as United losing four three, and um, it's not as bad as Chelsea drawing two two to Sheffield United. So no shade, you get me. But you lot hold that. Fair enough. We are gonna cut the the Tottenham for a segment by just one more thing because Curry P do does have to leave. Um, he's got he's got to go somewhere. So we will go straight to the Mud Brother of the Week challenge right now. So we will do that real quick. Spoon, bring out your whole bottle because you said you're going to drink the whole fucking bottle. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, also, big up, to, big up to Tony. Uh, everyone subscribe to Tony uh, Claude Gunner TV real quick. He yeah. says the title of the stream demeans Arsenal, but come on, I expect Sheik to be petty with it. All I said was United help Arsenal. Am I being Is wrong? it not true? Is, is it not true? true? Hey, I ain't gonna lie, Tony. I don't think that's petty at all because they did help us. True? Because exactly. if they if they didn't if they didn't get a point against Liverpool, Liverpool yeah, would still be top. So hey, I, I gotta I gotta I agree with Sheik on this one. Tony, I haven't heard you say this personally, but every single Arsenal fan was hitting me up, telling me, please do us a favor, please do me a favor, beat these guys. I'm going into I'm going to troops' chat and everyone is saying GGMU. All Arsenal fans are saying GGMU, so it's like Hey man, you, you guys needed the help, and guess what? We helped you. So before you say any of this, Tony, big up and all that stuff, say thank you, Manchester United. Say that. How about, <laughs> how about start off with that? How about how about talk to me nice and say thank you, Manchester United. Thank yeah. you. Big up Tony, by the way. But Tony, I can't lie. Like, like obviously, yeah, we don't know each other personally, but I just big up yourself. You're your top content creator, but you need to be addressed. Um, about this Manchester City thing, bro. Like, what happened to going to Manchester City? We go got on, the go artillery. On. Don't think I didn't watch that, Tony, bro. Go I on, swear. Andrea, you Sorry, were talking Andrea. about artillery. You were talking about, you think we can't go there with Kai Havertz and do something? Well, how about this, mate? You went there and you parked 11 men behind the ball. Like, Sean Dyche Arteta. That's your manager's new name. 
in, in, in that substance. So, Tony, I just wanted to address that. And I will be addressing you at the end of the season if you don't win anything. So, big up, Tony. Top content creator. I rate you, but I just, just know that I'm around, in it? And I, you will be addressed if Arsenal do not win it. Yeah. Fair enough. So, if you guys don't already know, for the two midweeks and the weekend fixtures, obviously midweek, Mud Brother does go to me and Spoobs, myself and Spoobs, for losing to Arsenal. Um, and then this weekend, it has to go to CP um, because he drew to 20th place, 20th place Sheffield United. Chelsea are the Mud Brothers for this weekend. So that's, those are our Mud Brothers for... Cheers, boys. Take a shot to that. I have my chaser with me, too. The shit. I have water. Yeah. It's not water. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Fuck. Hey. Hey, that boy Sheik Street, and he he drinking straight vodka. <laughs> <clears throat> Woo! Woo! Jeez. Come on, let's go well, then. Hey, we signed up for it. Woo! Woo, woo, woo. We signed up for it. But yeah, man. We moved. Um, cool. We'll go to everybody else. Rest of uh, the people talking about basically the Tottenham picture. Spoofs, we'll go to you. Um, your thoughts about the Spurs, Nottingham Forest game. And just overall predictions in the top four race as well. Do you think Spurs do get top four or do you think uh, they might slip up? Because they still have, like I said, Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City to play. All of those three teams. They will decide who wins that league as well in, certain, in some certain way. But your thoughts, bro? Uh, yeah, um, I'm worried about sending negative in case Madison comes out and assaults me. Um, how he got away with that in that game. If that's a Chelsea or an Arsenal or Arsenal Chelsea United player, that's uh, the outrage of that. But it's a small club like Spurs, so no one says it. Uh, also, no, but yeah, I, I actually do think Tottenham get top four. <laughs> I, I like I bantered and De Niro about saying top four, but uh, Villa are seem to be dropping a lot of points, and yeah, so, uh, Spurs ha- or Spurs have a <laughs> tough running. But I think um, I think they get top four. Big up Spurs, big Ange. He's gonna bring you back to greatness. Come on, you there Spurs. Go. There we go. Bring them back to greatness. Wait, what? What greatness? Yeah. Oh, you know, uh, years you know. 50, 50, 60 years ago, they want to fucking enter two. Don't you know? Win. Don't you know? Don't you know the two thousand eight Carabao Cup, man? Come on, never forget. Oh, never right. forget. Right, right, right. Easy, anyway. easy, easy, easy. <laughs> hey, well, I just asked Boobs what greatness he was. Right, but easy, easy, easy. I was easy. just being enlightened, yo. Like, I just asked him a fair question. Anyways, we move. CP will go to you before you obviously leave. Thoughts on Tottenham, Tottenham Forest? Um, it was very much like an easy game for you guys, to be honest with you. I don't understand how you guys keep on getting away with these shit fouls, to be honest. Like, unless it's Idogi, you guys get away with everything. Every shit foul, you get, unless it's Idogi and Romero, it's like they take all the heat, and that's about it. I don't understand this team. Um, Madison, where is he? <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want a missing, I want a missing persons report for Madison, please. Where is he gone? This is exactly what Leicester. Hold on, CP. And De Niro, do you think that was a red? James Madison. I didn't see it, mate. How about that? No, I didn't Uh, see it. it. Uh, I know it is. It was was a red. It was a red. It was a red. It was a red. To be fair, but obviously I didn't see it. That's the best reply, yo. I didn't see it. No comment. Oh my god, that's hilarious. But yeah, sorry, Kirby. Go on. Um. Yeah, I have a missing persons report for um, Madison because this is exactly what Leicester fans were saying. Yeah. In the beginning of the league, he'll do amazing. He'll be like, wow, he's amazing. And then he'll get injured and then he'll be bang average again. And that's exactly how it played out for the fourth year in a row. This happened three years in a row for Leicester. He I've watched him like he's not the singer, does he? Yes, he's mm. bang average. Mm. Bang average compared to what he used to be. Not Leicester. Yes, because he performs well before he gets in. He always gets, no, because he performs well and then he gets injured. And then after he comes back from the injury, he's shit. So it's always the first half he does well. He'll get injured near the second half and then he'll come back in the second half and be bang average. 
Well, at the end of the day, obviously, I hear what people are saying about the James Madison and getting injured and that. Like, that's the jarring part about him. But to obviously say that he's just gonna, for me personally, obviously, he's not been the best. But at the end of the day, and like, I'm still gonna give him the 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 the, the benefit of the doubt because even when he's bad, it's not bad in it. It's not like, oh yeah, you stink. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's just a bit like he wasn't hitting, he's not hitting the same levels he was hitting when we were at the top of the league at the beginning. But, like, at the end of the day, he's still a top player. And at the end of the day, he'll still be, he's still one of the players that's actually in the team that will still, that can still create a moment of brilliance. Just the same way as when you lot were playing the other day and then Cole Palmer weren't having a great game. You, you don't care if Cole Palmer's not having a great game or not. You know, he's got the individual brilliance to create something at times when you need it, regardless. Yes and no, because Madison has a history of this. Madison has a history of performing well in the first half and then being bang average in the second half with Leicester for three at seasons. Though, that's the team that he's at. Though. He's, doing the, he's, the, he's doing the same now. But that's he's doing the, the same now. That, but... He's doing the exact same now. He gets but... injured for a month and then he comes back and he's bang average. And he's your but best is... creator. But bang this... average is six. But bang average we're... for him is six. But then there's been games where he's come back and he's played well. So it's like he hasn't played bad every single game that you're saying. Like, yes, you're not saying. every single. Yeah, but that's also like what we're getting criticism for for Enzo, yeah. right? He's some games he's good. Most of the I games he's bang average. No, no, no. I'm saying he's bang average. No, yeah. it is. He's bang average. Like, dude, Gallagher has a, almost the same GNA as Madison now. Yeah, but what are we doing? Played more games than them anyway. So I hear that. Yes, but Mad- yeah, but Mad- Gallagher's the defensive ten. We know he's shit. We know he's shit. I'm not saying Madison is shit. We know know. Gallagher is shit. So compared to shit, he should be doing better than shit. No, he could definitely do better. I agree with that. Definitely do better. But I don't think it's like, it doesn't make me like, oh, right. Like, you're just, I feel like other players. Yes, it does. You know, you know why? Because it shows lack of consistency. Nah. He will get, no, he will get injured every season. We know he gets injured every season for at least a month. Injured, look, at the end of the day, Obviously, I understand that, and he gets injured. But like I said, if you go and look at certain games that he's played within the the time that he got injured and came back, there's been games where he's played well, and there's been games where he's not played well, isn't it? So I just think it's one of those ones where he's still the player that we that that can create an individual bit of brilliance that is needed in certain moments, and you will see that towards the end of the season when we play in these bigger games. Like, I just feel like that's the type of player he is. And people can say at Leicester, this is what he was doing. But at the end of the day, at Leicester, he was playing at Leicester. It says a lot when you're at Leicester. You can't carry a team like Leicester for the whole season. And even in that Leicester season, he still got more GNA than Bruno Fernandes. So at the end yeah. of the day, if we're going to put it down to all of that GNA and that, then you get me, we can start comparing it to other players. But I just think if you actually watch him on game wise, even when he played, I agree with you on the fact, I know you're not saying, I'm not even getting on to you, I'm just saying, but I, I agree with you on the fact that he could definitely do better 100%. There's no doubt. But it's not something that makes me, me personally, like, raw, like, this is crazy, like, you're playing so bad. I do think he can up the levels, and I'm saying that, the levels, I think people will understand why it's not the same Leicester thing. Because yes, he's had a couple of bad games, but I'm saying that when you look at when you look at the fixtures we have now, I promise you, based on his individual brilliance, you will see that's how we get certain results out of the certain game at the end of the season. And if we don't, then people can quote me. But from what I believe, I feel like that's what's gonna happen in it with him. But yeah. Fair enough. Okay. And also, also enough. don't for, don't forget that. Madison should be on more assists. It's just that his team ain't ain't helping him. You know, he, he sits it up on a plate and then some people just keep skying it or missing it, whatever the case may be. So there is that. There is yeah. that. So he should definitely be on more assists. I was going to say this too. Like, as much as we can talk about Madison, I think it's unfair to judge him just solely based off of one year. Yes, he's been injured and stuff like that, but you're in a completely new system and a completely new team under – under a manager like Ange as well, who's dealt with his own injury problems with the rest of the squad this year as well. So I want to see how Madison does next year. I think it's I think it's only fair to judge him next year in a more much better system with the right players, all of that stuff where Ange goes up to Madison. Because I think I think Madison is that type of player where you go up to him and be like, hey, this is the style I want to play. You can be that player who pulls the string for this style. I'm going to put these certain players around you, um, work something out with them, right? And I... I wanted Madison at the start of the season. I'll take Madison right now over Bruno Fernandez. For the amount of games that Madison plays, let's say out of 30, 38 games in a season, Madison at least 
at least gives me, I'll say 20, at least 20 games, right? We're in a much better position than what we are right now, 100%. Because if you look at a lot of these games where we're supposed to have more control, we're supposed to create more chances, all of that type of stuff, Madison does that for us. And yeah. I think in that sense, Madison is quality. Look at just the shit that he's done for Leicester City. Even after the whole Premier League, uh, you know, the year where they won the Premier League, they had Mares, they had Vardy. They still ended up lifting an FA Cup. Like, they still won a trophy with Leicester. Now Leicester are relegated. You know, you can say whatever about that, but he still won, he still won something with Leicester City too. So, yeah, Madison is, is quality. I think some of the criticism that he receives is a little bit over the board. It's only his first year. Give him some time. He's just come back from an injury. It was a pretty, like, I'd say a month, a month and a half type injury too. Um, a lot of that stuff's not easy. And I'm a firm believer that football, this sport, is a lot to do with rhythm. You need to be in this whole rhythm rhythmic thing at the club where you need to be starting like not week in week out but at least a couple run of games getting a good amount of minutes that's where we can really see where you are and how you fit into into your respective team right so yeah madison for me i'm not too much should it should have should that have been a red card i think so yes to be honest i think any other team does that any other player does that they probably take that back if arsenal had done that in a title race game he probably gets sent off if one of our teams, one of our players do that, they probably get sent off. The reason why he didn't get sent off, I have no idea, but I'm just going to call it as real as it is. It should have been a red card. But the criticism on criticism on Madison, a little bit overboard in my opinion. But we'll go to you, Eli. Your thoughts about the Nottingham Forest game. Obviously, give us your thoughts about the, the red card and stuff as well. And Spurs in the top four race, do you think they can get it? Uh, yeah, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. Yeah, I was actually just looking at um the fixture list here. So... Mm -hmm. This is Aston Villa. They gotta go. They gotta go away to Arsenal. They play Bournemouth at home. They play Chelsea at home. They go away to Brighton. They play Liverpool at home, and they go away to Crystal Palace. So those are those are their last fixtures. Aston Villa. So out of those games, it's, it's gonna be tough because you know Chelsea play to the level of their opposition. So Chelsea's definitely gonna give them a game. Brighton's definitely going to give them a game. They're not just going to, you know, sit it, you know, sit there and take it. Uh, obviously, Liverpool. That game is going to be tough. That game is going to be very tough. And then um, Crystal Palace. Who knows? You know, the new manager, new system. They still have Elise and they still have Eze. Both of them players gave Manchester City problems. So, you know, Villa. Don't don't be surprised if Villa drop points there either. So, yeah, these are all outside of the Bournemouth fixture, which I, where I think that they probably will be getting, you know, the three points there. Outside yeah. of that, the rest of those fixtures are looking very dicey. As for Tottenham, uh, let's see. Yeah, they just beat Nottingham Forest. So their next their next uh, game is Newcastle away. That'll be a dicey game because Newcastle finally picked they, – they're starting to pick up for them a little bit. Uh, and then they play Man City at home, which they have a very good record against Man City at home. So I, I look, I look at them to, I want to say at least get a draw there. I, I think they can at least hold City to a draw. I can't lie because they always play City well there. Yeah, like yeah. every every time Pep has gone there, he's never done well. So yeah. I, I see, I see them picking up points there at City. Uh, Arsenal, that'll be a tough game as well. I think that can end up as a draw, win or loss. Who knows? It depends on like, uh, like I was saying earlier, it depends on Arsenal's Arsenal's mentality at that point in the season. So it could go either way. Liverpool, they gotta wait. They gotta go <clears throat> away to Liverpool. Yeah, so, yeah. not a tough place. Yeah, that that's that's gonna be that's gonna be a game because you already know Liverpool's gonna want that revenge. So that mm -hmm. that'll be a game. Burnley, they should be yeah, they should be killing Burnley. They should be sacrificing Burnley. Same thing with Southfield United. They should be sacrificing them. So that's that's two games where I I see them getting six points. So, and then uh, they gotta play Chelsea away. So that that game is that game is going to be a little tough still, you know, and then I feel like Tottenham, they're probably going to want to get their get back against Chelsea. So, yeah, that that's going to be a, that's going to be a good, good run of games there. Uh, and then we have Man United. <clears throat> so their next fixture, they just played Liverpool. So their next fixture is Bournemouth away. So hopefully I, I, I think y'all are going to be trying to get y'all's get back against them since they beat y'all early in the season at home. Yeah. Uh, then y'all play Newcastle. Again, they picked up for them recently, so they're they they uh, they're definitely going to give you a tough game. 
Who knows what y'all's coming from? Y'all play Burnley at home. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> the way the way that y'all play, who who knows? Honestly, yeah, I, 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 I expect y'all to get the three points, but would I be surprised if y'all drop them? Not yeah, really. Respect my be, club, yeah. bro. Respect my club, bro. Respect my no. club. Burnley, impossible. No, 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 no. This is this is Man United. This is, this United, is Man United. United. About yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, because uh, I said uh, when I was talking about the Spurs fixture, I was like, I was, I was basically saying that y'all should be sacrificing Burnley and Sheffield. Yeah. Those are automatic six points for y'all. Um, Crystal Palace. Again, who knows? Who knows? Because that game early in the year was crazy. I think uh, that was where Flawless just lost all hope for Man United at that point. I just uh, think it was a, yeah, that game yeah, was man. terrible, man. And Warm then y'all going away yeah. to Crystal Palace, so y'all playing at Selhurst, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if y'all drop points there. Same thing with Arsenal. Yeah. I feel like y'all are going to actually play us, so y'all are going to be looking to get points out of that one, so that's going to be a hard game still. And I, is, I feel like it's just we... going to... Yeah. We will turn up, but if we play the same way that we played against Liverpool and give away the amount of chances that we do to you, you guys will bury them. That's what the difference in that game is. And I think that's what I've said about in my match reaction too. I said if Arsenal played us the way that we did, Arsenal pack us at least three or four one. Easy. Um, but that game's gonna be tough. It's it's more of just the fact that right now we have nothing to play for. The only thing that we're playing for yeah. is not letting these teams win the league. And that's like the whole thing. So we have a say in that. So I feel like in that mm-hmm. sense, the United will turn up. Do I think they're going to have oh, yeah. a masterclass of a performance? Hell no. We're not going to do none of that sort. But it's just the fact that they're going to have energy. Um, I don't even really think we'll bottle it to a certain extent. It'll just be the fact that we'll keep fighting till, till, till we can. So yeah. that's that's simply just yeah what it is. But yeah, go on, Eli. Yeah, and then the last two fixtures y'all have are Brighton away and Sheffield yeah. at home. So... Mm-hmm. Y'all should be y'all y'all should be sacrificing Sheffield. I, I can't lie. Y'all should be at least winning that by two two or three goals to one. Mm-hmm. Brighton, that'll be a little tough for y'all because they are the antithesis of how y'all play football. So they're gonna they're gonna be Brighton away cutting well. through y'all. Yeah, bro. They're they're gonna be cutting through y'all like 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 a knife through hot butter. You know what I'm saying? So I hear you, yeah. I think I think Brighton are gonna Brighton are gonna they're gonna give it to y'all. I can't lie. So there you go. In terms of all these fixtures, I think that Spurs are they probably have the best chance of going uh winning top four. I think Spurs get fifth. I think Man United stay sixth. Fair enough. Fair enough. Any final three points on Spurs? Anything like that of that sort? Um that Madison, yeah, Madison should have seen red. Um y'all y'all bought the wrong Nottingham Forest player. Y'all should have went for Gibbs White. Let's be real. Gibbs White, that boy's a baller. That boy is a baller. Like, I want him at Arsenal. I can't lie. Uh, I would love for him to play. I mean, come off the bench. He'll be a great, great bench bench player for us. Uh, outside of that, Chris Wood, shame on you. Shame on you. Yeah, shame you on can't you. be missing. You can't be missing those type of shots, fam. You you can't be missing those. You're you're um uh, you're you're, you're, you're supposed Chris to be Deadwood. right, Chris Deadwood for real. Like you you got you got to be hitting the target there, bro. You can't be hitting the post. That that was absolutely shameful. Um, great win for Spurs. Timo, Timo, Timo scores again. <laughs> I beg Timo hey. stays. Timo, you need to. Hey, you deserve beg, to beg. stay in that Timo, team. Timo, Timo, stay, stay, please, just stay, stay. Bro. just stay, yeah, stay there, please. stay there. <laughs> stay, Timo. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, nah, but hey, great win for Spurs. You know they they did what they always do. Like they'll 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 go go behind and then they'll absolutely batter the team later. Yeah. So that I mean they the typical Spurs performance uh, that I've come to that I've come to enjoy seeing. I can't lie, I like the way Spurs play football. I like I like the triangles. I like the interchanging of 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 a person. I like I like the movement. I like I like I love I love how they I ha- I love how they play. I can't lie. Even as an Arsenal fan, I gotta. I'm a fan of football before, you know, I'm an Arsenal fan. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just love watching football. And the way Spurs play football, you got to admit, it, it's very pleasing to the eye. So, I can't, you know, none, 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 but, none but love to uh, to Spurs, you know. As much as I would like for them to drop points, they keep winning. So, it is what it is. And, and to answer uh, H, I said Spurs fourth, 
uh, Villa fifth and United six. Yeah, fair. That's fair. Fair assessment. Cool. So yeah, that's it. That's it for you know the midweek fixtures, the weekend fixtures, our review of all of that stuff. Obviously, if you guys didn't check, me, Spoobs, and Curry P were the Mud Brothers of the week or of the two weeks. So we did our little shot challenge a couple of minutes ago. We are gonna pretty much close out, but before we do close out, a couple of games this week, midweek, a couple of games on the weekend as well. We will be doing our predictions. So we're gonna start off with the predictions for the Champions League this week. Obviously, Eli's team plays tomorrow, I believe. Um, they go uh, at home to Bayern Munich. No Bayern Munich fans going to be in the stadium as well because they have that ban. So we'll start off with myself. Arsenal versus Bayern Munich at home. I'm going to say two. I'm actually going to say three one. Uh, three one Arsenal. I think Arsenal do do the business in this game. Um, yeah, this Bayern Munich team, even though their full focus will be on the Champions League and Arsenal, I just don't think this team is good enough. Heads have dropped. They've already lost the league. They probably lose the league this this upcoming weekend. Uh, Leverkusen are just one game away um, from winning the title. So Harry Kane's not going to do shit. Eric Dyer and Upa Meccano at the back. It's going to be life. It's going to be it's going to be a field day for these Arsenal players. So I'm I'm going three one Arsenal. Swoops, we'll go to you. Um, one nil Arsenal. One nil Arsenal players. Okay, yeah. M. De Niro. Um, yeah, one no Arsenal as well, and I need it to be one no Arsenal, so yeah, one no Arsenal. Okay. Eli. All right, so I'm praying for a 3 0. I'm praying for a 3 0, but I think it's going to be a 2 1. I think it's, I think it's either going to be a 2 0 or a 2 1 because I'm not going to like. As much as you know, they've been dropping form in the league. This is the last trophy that they have to play for, so they're going to be gung ho. Even even though Tuchel's a, a trash manager, I still feel like he's decent at these at these cup competitions. So I, yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say that that we're gonna 100 yeah. win the game because it can easily easily be one of those games where they just catch us out. You know, what I'm saying even though they have no fans, they have nothing else to play for. So. This is this is one of those banana peel games, in my opinion. So, would I be surprised if we lost or drew this game? No, no, I'm not. I, I can't because they still they got too much talent on that team. You know, Muller, uh, Musiala, uh, Serge Gnabry, Leroy Sané, Harry Kane. You know, they they got ballers up there. Uh, Kimmich. You know, the midfield is kind of eh, and the defense is kind of eh. So that's where we can get at them. But in terms of their attacking quality, they got it in spades. So I wouldn't be surprised if we dropped the ball again because I've seen it happen before. So I'm going to approach this with caution, and I'm going to say it's either it's either going to be a 2-0 or 2-1. Fair enough. To the, uh, to the I Gunners. actually – I don't know if you guys will agree with me on this, but I actually think this game right here, this Champions League game, is one of Arsenal's most important games in the whole season because this will give oh yeah one hundred percent one hundred percent one hundred percent where this Arsenal team really is because let's yeah. say they pack him let's say they pack this Bayern team right you could just imagine the amount of morale that like how much of a boost of a morale it would be for this Arsenal team who are currently in a title race because this Bayern Bayern Munich just in general have haunted this club in the Champions League in the past they've lost ten two on aggregate before. Trust me, I know these Arsenal players are thinking of that. They're thinking about the last time they faced this team. Obviously, it was a much, much different team than the ones that they played personally. But when they faced this club in the Champions League, it was embarrassment last time. That was one of the last few times Arsenal were in the Champions League itself. So this game, I know, will be a huge boost for the fans if they do get a result tomorrow. But just also for the season in general, I think this puts Arsenal... This will really test Arsenal. And a lot of judgments will change on Arsenal after this game. If they pack him... If they win like 3-1 on my prediction, I'm looking at Arsenal and I'm like, okay, Arsenal, like you guys are actually showing up. That unity that you lacked last year after, you know, heads dropped after the Southampton game, the West Ham game, the Liverpool game, that won't be the, I won't say that that's still there after they win a certain way against this Bayern Munich team. Because then that's one of, you're in that one step of the right direction where you're all still locked in. No matter what adversity you guys face, um, the team is so unified and they're all together. So I think this is a very, very important game for Arsenal. And we'll see. We'll see if they turn up. Obviously, this whole 
you know, no away fans and stuff. That's going to obviously help out Arsenal to a bit. It's going to be loud. It's going, the atmosphere, I'm sure, is going to be great. Um, it's just whether Arsenal will turn up. And I know Bayern Munich, to a certain extent, will. Like I said, they could be shit. They could be having the season that they've had. But it comes down to this whole Champions League heritage. It all comes down to the fact that they have nothing else to play for. So they will show up. I think they will show up. But we'll see. Then we go to um, the next game of tomorrow. Um, probably, arguably the biggest tie in the Champions League so far. Real Madrid versus Manchester City at home at the Bernabeu. This one, I'm not going to lie, is a tough game. It's a very tough game to call. But I am going 2-1 Real Madrid. I think Real Madrid will do the business. If you're an Arsenal fan, you hope that Man City win this tie. Because on over two legs, I think you guys get the better of Man City. But if you're an Arsenal fan, you hope Man City win this tie. But I'm going 2-1. Spooks, we'll go to you. Uh, I'll go 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. There's. And today? Yeah, I'm, going, I'm going with what AJ just said. 3-1 Madrid store. There's. What AJ said store. Eli. I'm, I'm gonna go with the uh, I'm gonna go with AJ as well because that boy Rodrigo is different, bro. Yeah. Rodrigo is different. Rodrigo. Three one. Oh, sorry. Uh, three one. Yeah, three one. Real Madrid. Cool. Then we go to Wednesday's fixtures. Um, we got Atletico Madrid versus Borussia Dortmund. I'm going for a one nil Atletico Madrid. It's Atletico Madrid at home. At home, yeah. Um, 1-0 no Madrid. 1-0 no Madrid, cool. Yeah, 2-0 yeah, no Atletico Madrid. 2-0 no Atletico Madrid. 2-1 Dortmund. Sancho one Masterclass. Dortmund. I hope so. I hope Dor- I hope Sancho balls. But yeah, happy to see him in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Good for him, man. But then we go to PSG versus Barcelona. Both two teams, I think, are absolutely dead. Um, such a tough game it's going to be to watch, to be honest. But... Um, I'm actually going to go with the draw. I think it's going to be 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, 2-2. Two, two. Desmond. 2-1 um, PSG. Yeah, 2-1 PSG as well. 2-1 PSG, cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the same thing. 2-1 Mbappe. Too much for Barcelona. Those, those That team won't be able to cope with that, man. Last time he played Barcelona, he scored a hat trick at Camp Nou, also. So he'll come yeah. for that game, too. Yeah, With yeah, a yeah. better team. Yeah, true. So we'll see. Cool. That's the Champions League fixtures. We're going to then move on to the Premier League games for the weekend. We start off at Newcastle. M. De Niro, your, your team travels to Newcastle this week in the early fixture. It's like 4 30 a.m. for me on Saturday. Crazy. Um, Newcastle versus Spurs. I'm going for. I think you guys still win, to be honest. I'm going for 2-1 Spurs. I'll go 3-1 Spurs. Funny enough, I was going TT. 2-2. That was going to be Also going Desmond. Yeah. yeah. I think you guys win, to be honest. Because yeah. uh, cool. it's, it's going to be a lot of goals in this game, and I wouldn't be surprised, even if it doesn't end Desmond, I feel like there's going to be at least four games. And each one of those teams has the capability of getting a winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fairs. Um, then we go to Brentford versus Sheffield United at home to Brentford. I'm going for 2 0 Brentford. Um, 2 1 Brentford. 2 1 Brentford. 1 0 Brentford. And you said they play Sheffield, right? Yeah, at home. 3 0. 3 0. 3 0 Brentford. Cool. Then we've got Burnley at home to Brighton. I'm going for 2 1 Brighton. 2 0 Brighton. 3 1 Brighton. I'm going 4 1. 4 1 Brighton. Cool. Manchester City at home to Luton Town. Um, I'm actually going to go for. You know, a lot of people would predict this Luton Town to team to get packed, but I'm actually going to go for 2 0 City. Mm, 3 0 City. 3 0 City. 
Okay. Yeah, I can't lie, bro. This is where City do the business in it. So I can't lie. It's like 4 1 City in it. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to run my agendas here. If Holland and De Bruyne are playing this game, <laughs> Desmond. Thurs. Thurs, Thurs, Thurs. Then we go to. But that's only if Elijah Adebayor is uh, fit. If he's fit, then it's 2 2. But if he's not fit, then they win 3 0. Yeah, good good point here from A. She says this is where City can go on that run, in my opinion. Yeah, they could start officially underway from that game onwards. But cool. We'll go to Forest versus Wolves next. Um, I'm gonna go for one nil wolves. Uh one one. One one. Where are they playing at Forest? At Forest, yeah. Forest two one. Two one. Cool, right? Ooh. I think I think Huang. And Neto are still out. I think Cunha came back last game. But still ain't enough, honestly. Uh, I think Forrest went 2-1. Forrest went 2-1. Yeah, it's basically Aitnori, Cunha, and who else? <laughs> yeah. Last game of the uh, last game of Saturday, Bournemouth at home to Manchester United. Um, I'm going for 1-1. I don't think we win, to be honest. Mm. And Spoob's over there racking his brain. <laughs> yeah, this is sad, man. This is crazy. Uh, two one, you know. Where's that Bournemouth? At Bournemouth, yep. yeah. <laughs> oh, United, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro, I'm going with AJ Blunt. Two one born. <laughs> oh, That's crazy. Yeah, I, I think uh I think Bournemouth win. I'm going with the uh, two nil, two nil Bournemouth. Two nil Bournemouth first. Cool. Then we go to Liverpool Sunday's fixtures. Liverpool versus Crystal Palace at home to Liverpool. Um, I'm going for I think Liverpool bounce back. Um. 2-0 Liverpool. 3-1 uh, Liverpool. Yeah, 3-1 Liverpool. 3-2 Palace. Cool. West Ham at home to uh, Fulham. Uh, let's see. 2-1 West Ham. 1-1. One, one. See what it is with both these teams. They're so weird, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. They yeah. so weird. Um, I'm just going to go over T2 still. Okay. Mm. Still yeah, this is this is tough, man. Playing against Fulham, man. Both of these teams are very, very weird. But you know what? I believe in Kudis. Kudis and pa- uh, Paketa going 2 1 West Ham. 2 1 West Ham. Cool. Now we've got the final fixture for the weekend, at least on Sunday as well. Arsenal at home to Villa. Um, tricky game. I'm not going to lie. If, if Villa have most of their team fit. Um, but I think Arsenal do do the business. It's going to be tough, though. I'm going with 2 1 Arsenal. Uh, 2-0 Arsenal. Yeah, 2-0 Arsenal. 3-0. Antetovino. <laughs> okay. Um, last game of the week, um, Chelsea versus Everton at home to Chelsea. Um, Ooh. We have Brooks, is, Wood, and Concrete. Uh, again, agenda purposes only, but fuck Chelsea. I'm going for 1-1. <laughs> <laughs> one one. That game has a one one written all over it. I'm not even gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll go one one too. No, oh, so crazy. I could actually see a no no on this game, you know, because of that the too. Fact. I could, I could yeah. see that too, because I know Everton are gonna stink yeah. that place out. You can't be so. Yeah, yeah. No, no for me. So, hey, you know what it is about dodgeball. 
you know, <laughs> we bricks wooden concrete over here. So it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be tough. <laughs> One nil Everton. Fairs. Yes. Fairs, fairs, fairs. Cool. All right. And then that's it. That's uh it for the predictions of the upcoming fixtures. Um eight says Shake West and the rest of you, man. I personally say the show starts at eight, so we gotta watch along as well as Mud Brothers. I hear you. We can do that. It's really just based on me. It's because today I had some shit to deal with earlier. That's why I couldn't start it at seven. But if the rest of the people are okay with it, rest of the men are okay with it, yeah, we'll start off at eight. No problem with that. But thank you guys, everyone, for tuning in. Obviously, uh, subscribe to myself, to the channel if you haven't already. Also, subscribe to Spooby and Eli. Their links are in the description. Um, definitely check out Eli's Twitch page and YouTube page and check out Spooby's YouTube channel as well. He does watch along here and there. He actually did one for... Uh, you're going to do one tomorrow, right, Spooks, for the Arsenal Bayern Munich game? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it with Paddy MC93 in the chat. He's an Arsenal fan. There you go. So we'll be watching that. Hey, yeah. Spooky and Arsenal fans going to do a watch long for that Bayern Munich game. So definitely check it out. But other than that, before we do close out, um, like I said, appreciate everyone for supporting the channel, everyone who was here today. Joel, Pat MC93, H, I know Hassan was in here earlier, AJ, Warrior J, um, we had um, uh, Prime. Jazz, everyone who was, who was in that channel earlier. TJ. Supporting. TJ, Raja, everyone. Thank you guys for all supporting, man. The show obviously wouldn't be here without you guys. So we'll keep running it up, though. As, as the title race and the top four race and all of these different races are getting closer, the content is just going to get better and better. So big up to all, all of y'all. Before I do close out, any of you guys have anything rest, uh, left to say? You know, shout out your channels and stuff like that. Spooks, yeah. we'll start off with you. Um, yeah, just big up everyone that's stayed, every, all the familiar names. Jules been there for the whole thing, Bad MC, Itch, everyone, AJ, just everyone that uh, supports us. Um, all the likes, all the feedback you give us, you know, keeps us going. Um, and yeah, subscribe to Sheik, like, uh, like the video. Appreciate it. I'm De Niro. Yeah, man. So we'll see. I'm uh, basically the channel I'm on now, anyways. Obviously, I'm going to be releasing content on this channel. Um, so at the end of this week, I'll have a video out, first video for this channel out. Nice. On the weekend, it's going to be filled with, it's, it's not really football content, but it's to do with, if you're somebody that likes jokes, comedy and that, it's a lot of vlogs, a lot of other stuff in there. Um, there yeah, so that will be out this week. And then obviously, um, I'll have uh, Twitch soon as well. Got a plan for Twitch as well. But obviously, yeah, man, the, the link will be out this week. So from this week, let me start with that. Yeah. There we go. So yeah, yeah. follow up uh, M. De Niro on Instagram and stuff like that too, where Subscribe. social media, where you can know when he's going to be dropping all this content on his new channel. And then obviously once I get the link from him, it will be in the description every single time for the Mud Brother Show. So subscribe to him as well whenever you guys do get a chance. Eli, we'll go to you. Anything you got coming up? And shout out all your, your upcoming shows and channels, man. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, big up to the panel first and foremost. My brothers, my brothers, you know what I'm saying? You one of the know. You know, one of my one of my favorite parts of the week, you know, I get to get to sit here and chill, you know, <laughs> look at that. Three hours have gone by. didn't even feel like it. You know what I'm saying? Really? So bless up. Bless up for them. Bless up to you, man, in the chat. You know, y'all y'all will keep this channel going. All of the channels. Make sure y'all like subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell. And, you know, you know what time it is every Monday, every Monday, 8 p.m. You know where to be. You know, you know where to be. Be you know here. Be. You know what I'm saying? That's what uh that's what I got coming up. I uh, should be streaming uh here within the next couple of hours. I'm gonna be on uh be back on my Twitch channel, the uh underscore book of Elos. Uh, streaming some more Rise of the Ronin, trying to get a little further in there. Probably gonna uh, continue with the story since I've literally done everything there is to do outside of the story. So we're gonna be doing the story. Um, so yeah, you know, fun times, jokes, you know, you know, you know how it is. Just like how I'm on here, I'm over there. You know, it's just not going to be about, you know, just football. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, keep a lookout for that. And then whatever um, I post on my Twitch, I also post on my YouTube. So if you missed the Twitch stream, then you'll be able to see the VOD on uh, on YouTube. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I got going on. Um, yeah, but bless up. Appreciate y'all for having me on. Yeah, Always good man. banner and jokes talking with y'all. You know, love the forfeit, all that good stuff, man. Always a good time. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This this one shot that I took it it kind of got me moving a little bit crazy. Right? <laughs> 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 Straight to your head. 
it's really it's gone straight to my head man but yeah it is what it is you guys already know man this show is absolute pleasure to do it's one of my favorite shows it just in, in in terms of content creating it's always you know even though we lose sometimes and we have terrible results it's always good man if that makes sense it's it's kind of fun getting trolled by the rest of the panelists and stuff like that man so it's always fun shows all cool always love and vibes i know you know me and cp went at it a little bit today because i had a lot to to go at him towards our game and all that stuff that we played in midweek, but all love and stuff at the end of the day. Oh, um, yeah. And that's why we're trying to get the show to where it belongs, man. We're trying to make this a household name. So the rest of the panelists and myself will always do our best to do that. Um, there are times where I will hit everybody up. We'll try to do a mud, like a mud brothers show in between of the week. If everyone is around, but if not, you will always see us on Mondays, but yeah, yeah man, big up to everyone. Thank you guys for always supporting the channel too. And we will catch y'all next week, next week when we do, when we are back, Arsenal will have played Bayern Munich in the Champions League. We will also see some of the weekend's fixtures. So it's going to be, it could potentially be a tough week for, for Eli, but we'll see how it all goes, right? But big up to everyone. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will catch you all in the next one. Episode 11. Big up, guys. Big up. Big up. Big up. Big up.